Uh, the reason we put the title as trading fast and slow is because it's a it's a play on the the book, right? Thinking fast and slow, but also I I strongly believe that if you can employ that the you know trading fast and slow into your trading you know you'll have a lot better success we're seeing a bit of a pullback here after a, a big um big volume came up here at the top two big volume nodes and they came in on the way down kind of and it, and it uh, most of it came in on the bid side there it goes hmm. Taking this thing down to probably to the 93 and came down quick. Everyone was all tricked about this, uh, this little pump on the open. Your big one's getting a little bit of gas now, too. Nice pullback back to volume, right back to half back, though. So that looked a little bit of me uh, looked mechanical. Where is my? If you guys saw the uh the numbers that came out this morning um there was the epi numbers i think that came out this morning and they were not great um the biggest issue with them is mainly just the cost of goods that's going up um just the cost of living that's going up oops what's this There we go. Okay. Um, I mean, morning, Zoe. Morning, Tommy. Basically, what we're seeing with these, with these, uh, this pen not open. Where are you? Give me. There it is. Sorry, I cannot find my pen. Um, basically, kind of what they're worried about is because all of the prices of everything is going up that they're they're i mean nervous that if the price of goods keeps going up for the uh, manufacturer then obviously it's going to go up for the consumer and it's going to become so expensive and basically every the uh, the CPI report yesterday was saying everything is elevated in cost. And then the PPI report confirmed it today. Everything is elevated in cost. And the only way that you're not going to be affected is if you don't use fuel and you don't eat food. So, um, you know, maybe like uh, animals not be affected by it. Caesar, what's up, man? So watch this half back, this 3999, 4400. Um, we saw some really uh yeah, mechanical buyers on it, and then they just bust through it. There it goes. Oh yeah, I could go over the short. So basically, um, let's see where did I short it? I shorted at, at 08 and 08 quarter. I only shorted two lots, but I took them down, closed them at uh, 4400 pretty decent pretty decent little fade right there um and that's all it was it was just a fade i was kind of just you know we opened in an inside day inside yesterday right we we didn't take the globex low off the open we do have overnight inventory pretty much 100 percent net long not really a lot of um conviction to the downside and the upside trade was more of just a gut feeling than anything probably not the best trade probably definitely a better trade to be more patient but when this thing came up here, it popped and it came back down to this 40, uh, 410. And all of a sudden, just like fucking volume just started to pour in. But it started to pour in on the bid or on the ask, right? So it was like buyers just hammering, 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 hammering. It dropped down again and then they did it again on the nine. Hammering, hammering, hammering. And as soon as I saw it a second time, I was like, okay, me. And I just got short. Um... And that, I mean, that was pretty much it. It was just a fade. 
and by it not coming back to this point of uh, overnight point of control or a very prominent overnight point of control we've got 13 tpos wide that kind of tells us the strength right so we, we've got kind of weak strength weak sellers and we also have weak buyers but that was pretty much it you took that short too good stuff that was a dangerous short though but it was good morning uh morning pop morning trend Let's see if we get a reaction off the settle right here. So normally, you know what they say, a strong market won't break the open. So if this thing, as this thing's coming down, if we, uh, if we don't see it break the open, then, you know, we'll, we'll get a, get a little sign right there, right? We'll know a little bit. Young Cryptic, what's up, my man? sim hey jimmy it doesn't matter if you're on the sim or if you're on real money you know what matters is that you're actually out there trying right um i do want to give a shout out to my dad he actually funded his 150k account today and that was by using the mes two lots at a time it took him 38 days 38 days that's it that's it 38 days that's not shit 38 days of your life 38 days of your life to have a 150k funded account let's go so good job i'm i'm super i'm super pumped like a fucking tv show over here got a full rotation of prior day value on btc in 30 minutes done for the day let's go hell yeah Jesus. that's the best nothing is is better than just finishing early and then today is friday ish right um the uh the uh we're getting a lot of bid trades here but the market's not really climbing up here they need to get back above that 4400 or else this thing's gonna keep rolling down um forget what i was gonna say um Oh yeah, today is like Friday kind of because the market's not open tomorrow or uh or actual Friday because of um market sad because Jesus died. So <laughs> I think trading will be open till I think I think it'll be open until tomorrow, like nine till tomorrow till the open. So there'll still be Globex tonight. Then tomorrow until the open, and then once the open comes around, then it'll be done. Watch that settle here. They're giving a little bit of uh, front running on a settle. Uh, something interesting to note too. If you look at the epoch for um, Globex. The VPOC is actually down here at the close. A lot more volume came in down below the open, or below the settle, I mean, um, compared to up here with, uh, right, this is almost double, 10,000, 4,000, so it's almost double. Almost double the volume came in underneath. US Open's been pretty rewarding lately. Yeah, it has. US Open's been pretty nice lately. We've had an interesting couple of days, that's, that's for sure. Zul. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Watch this 4400. This is kind of where they got busy last time. I mean, that, that looked like a decent pullback. They kind of hold the settle. Interesting. Let's take a peek around the market real quick, see what's going on here. I 
cap of above the 200 SMA Delta. I got some puts on Delta after this gap up. I want to see uh, eat shit, but okay. Uh, flexible grid. So when we look at this, and this is the weighted sectors here, so you're getting some buying in the weighted sectors, and the rest of the market's starting to catch up now. So it's now it's starting to look a little bit, a um, little bit better. The tick still looks, you know, pretty normal. We've most got most bodies up above the one. You can see apples down from yesterday, from yesterday's high, but still looking to come up um, on the day. One of our stronger names. All right, Apple's green, Microsoft green, Google green, Amazon green, Tesla green, Facebook green, Nvidia green, Walmart, Procter Gamble, um, Home Depot, Mastercard. A lot of green here in this top one hundred. We've got kind of a mixed bag here. Healthcare is red, energy, real estate, utilities. So all of our risk off uh markets are red and then all of our risk on markets are green for the most part except healthcare healthcare is kind of a back and forth anyways so yeah so yeah it's pretty cool i mean you know that's a it's a take some dedication and he's put in a lot of hard work and you know i'm really happy for him so now he's got his two funded accounts he's got a 50k funded account and a 150k funded account so just keep trading them the same way and the results will be the same and they'll just multiply over time that's all it will be you'll start trading with two lots and then then three lots and then four lots and then you know one thing that my dad said i was actually talking to him before we got on the stream today he said the thing that helps him the most when he's on the mes is that he's just so much more comfortable letting a trade work itself out you know so if he's looking for the market to break above this to go to here he just sits in the trade and, and lets it work out right he's not getting uh pulled around in these uh in the choppiness he he really just kind of lets it go so cool. can you trade them all together yeah yeah so it'd just be like a drop down right so it'd be like um you know it'll say like like right here mine says p a apex and then dash whatever the number says whatever your funded account number is. And you just click down, you can switch to your other PA account. Bitcoin's back above that weekly view up. So our 39136 is held pretty nice. You know, hopefully everyone got a little, a little uh, tasty trade of that. We can hang it into the weekend. I'm still holding a long, but I got my long over here. And when we hit this BWAP, I really thought it was gonna, I really thought it was gonna come back down and then pop again and ended up getting kind of, uh, well, I don't wanna say trapped, but came all the way back down almost like, I mean, actually came below my entry and I was like, you know, I started to have like a, uh, you know, mini freak out and then. the fuck is going on with my dom? Those are closed. So why the fuck is it? We broke the settle. All right, surprise, surprise. A bunch of mechanical buying off that settle, that B rally, a little short covering rally off the settle. We already know where our supply is at, right? It's at that 44.10, 44.9 area. That's where the resistance was at. That's where the um where it came in. Not surprising. Here's this settle from a couple of days ago. Here's that low, the 03, but the settle was that 09 quarter. 
go right around. They're just kind of shorting that saddle. It seems mechanical. Really, I'm not going to be convinced until until we break, you know, either, well, definitely the Globex low, right? But the previous day's low. And if you read the trade view, one thing I was talking about last night um, that I was trying to, that I was trying to explain um, through text, which is, you know, fairly difficult, is... The reason I don't, I didn't like the, the short down here is because the way that this closed, if you guys watch the close, right, we had this kind of like L period just came down hard and then M period literally went like this. Like it, it stayed down here for, you know, a couple of seconds and then just fucking started going up and then, and then settled above and then, you know, a bunch of short covering overnight. Um, what was interesting to me is it just seems like the market got a little bit emotional when we broke that low from yesterday and then um i had our cpi i i left our cpi marker on there if you guys want to add it to your charts from two days ago this is the impulse from the cpi and and this is the area where i'm thinking if we are not above this level we don't even want to be thinking about uh, being long. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of using this as resistance. Not that there wasn't long opportunities, right? Um, I know I took a long on the open. I know my dad took a long on the open. So there was some, there's a uh, opportunity. I'm more, when I, when I'm telling you guys that stuff, it's not, it's not that, um, you shouldn't be getting, it's not that there's not going to be opportunity. It's just a safer play, right? So the, in a safer play or a safer environment, you just won't trade this at all, right? You'll wait until we get below this low, or at least below the Globex low, and then you can target this, but below this low, and look for volume to follow and hold, and then and then go with it, right? Or get above this, and really, really, I don't even. I mean, really above. Really, I'd like to see above the fifty. I don't even. I don't even really enjoy the upside of the market until fifty. I think I would just probably be trying to fade inside here if we see um, buying start to weaken until we get up. Um, above that 50. That's kind of the area that's going to convince me. You went live today, 2.5 points, one trade, done for the day. Nice. Good stuff. But but that's what I mean. Like, it's just, it's in an interesting dynamic today because we had kind of this liquidation. We're opening up inside this liquidation. So it seems like more inventory correction from all of the late momentum shorts and and uh people buying the dip which there was a lot of both yesterday at the end and the market's just kind of trying to work itself out today so until we get some continuation in either direction you know there's not really um not really much safety right there's going to be trades in here but the trades are going to be choppy and so you're just going to have to understand that and then you know, trade accordingly In Bitcoin going nice valley. There we go. Yeah, when Bitcoin got above that view up, I was like, okay. And then it pulled back, and I'm like, hmm. And then it started popping, and I'm like, okay, I'm I'm chilling. And so I actually stopped watching it, and we were streaming, and then all of a sudden it started coming down. I'm like, I'm gonna hold it into the weekend, I think, or through the weekend. Like it's some Easter love. Maybe Jesus will buy Bitcoin over the weekend once he uh once he uh comes back to life on Sunday. I'm excited for Easter. I fucking love Easter. Play some croquet. Send my brother's ball into the creek. Anybody play croquet? You guys know about croquet? Knock your ball through little hoops and hit a stick. Oh yeah, that's it. That's someone. I've been playing for a long time. Hey. Being... Brad, what? Are you going to your mom's? No, I'm going to my brother's. Oh, sw swing by here and pick up the baskets then. What baskets? Uh, 
You keep cutting out. Can't hear anything you're saying. Can't we can't hear anything you're saying. Oh, market's starting to rally a little bit, catching a little bit of a bit here. Back up above that uh, 4,400. Watch to see if it can hold. Big buying volume. If it doesn't hold this 4405, it's going to drop probably. Just be careful. It's, not, it's doing okay. 4405 to 4400 is going to be the area that these buyers are going to need to hold this time. You can see they auction down, right? To be, I mean, B period obviously is still inside A period. It comes down, it doesn't break the open. They say a strong market doesn't break the open. This market didn't break the open. It did break the settle just by a little bit and now it's above it and now we're back above that you know uh very mechanical number 4400 and we have our volume point of control shift to that right we've seen a lot of buying jump up on that 4400 and kind of push the market up right there and now we're seeing sellers try to absorb or try to recover here really if buyers get above that 10 right the high or really just that 10 that high volume you, you might see a, a big uh a big pop. I can hear everything at your house. I had to mute you. Oh, I, uh, the name said we'll give you the baskets at the hockey game. Oh, okay. Are you talking about Easter baskets, like for the kids? Yeah. Oh, okay. We're we're coming down on uh, we're coming down Friday morning um if you're going to be at work we could just stop by your work and just say hey for, for a second oh that'd be great yeah we yeah, could. Love that. yeah we could do that yo luis what's up man so they're struggling here you know i mean really this 4400 to 4405 is is acting as a bit of resistance for these buyers on this way up What's good, Brad? No, just hanging out. I'm in some nice trades right now. I'm in a nice Bitcoin and Ethereum long. And nice. XRP long. Ooh, XRP, huh? Living on the edge. Living on the edge, baby. <laughs> I have a Bitcoin long on uh, as well right now. Yo, Scott, what's up, man? Give you a trade. Like, you have action. I didn't even realize that the market was going to be closed tomorrow. I thought it was just going to be closed Friday. Why is it closed tomorrow and e Friday? Easter. Because in God we trust in America. That's why. Roger. <laughs> That's what Biden always says when he signs off. I think that's pretty cool. Like, because I mean, he is Catholic as fuck, and so you know, he when he always signs off, he's like, "God protect our troops and in God we trust," or or something like that. And he's he still he sticks with it. And I, I was surprised because you know a lot of times, um, you know, as a Democrat, you get like grief if you're religious, which makes no sense to me, but. He couldn't even put a sentence together. <laughs> he, he he put together that he's about to clap Putin's ass if he keeps this shit up, though. It says that it's only closed Friday. Right, really? Yeah, it says that it's open tomorrow. I looked at the closure dates, and it's only Friday, April 15th. Oh, look, yes. And if I look at the options that I'm playing, they say one day. Hey, mine... mine... I have these DAL puts, and they say they expire today. Oh, really? Um, yeah, these say, they say April 14th. What is, what is the date on it? This is... It says 
it includes the following dates, 14 to 18 April. So maybe it's just... But this might be just for the futures. I don't know about the stock market. But I mean, it would if the stock market's open, the futures market would be open. I would expect. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Thursday... Yeah, this thing says the E-mini, S&P, NASDAQ, and Russell are closed at 830 and equities don't close till 1500. U.S. equity BTIs. Oh, no, that's not. That's It's just future. Maybe it's a short day? Maybe, yeah. Maybe it's a short. Hmm. I'll have to find out. I thought it was closed. Yeah, my DAL short just got absolutely like 150 bucks down the drain. I mean, it was worth a shot. I don't understand how they have good earnings, especially with everything going up. But yeah, it's a good Friday, April 15th. However, bond traders will enjoy the full Friday day off, but also partial trading day Thursday. The bond markets will be shut down at 2 p.m. for Maudi Thursday. So they will be closing early tomorrow. So two hours early. Yeah, tomorrow will probably be just terrible volume. But we might find some good trade. So still not able to really get too much above uh, this five level. Kind of struggling up here still. You're starting to see some sellers re-offer this area up here. They're, they're selling that five. You're starting to see some volume build up here. Um, this area, like I said, the five to 4,400 has been acting as resistance. But if they can get above that, we should, they, they should be able to, you know, look to that 4,410 where we saw all the selling this morning. Above that 4,410 probably get you back up above that uh, CPI, that 44.16. 50 which is the overnight point of control as well which is you know not surprising right and of selling off of that morning adam apple's up you know just under one percent so is microsoft google amazon's up just barely over half a percent tesla's up about three quarters of a percent brookshire hathaway is actually down facebook's up um 73 quarters of a percent nvidia's climbing back up they gotta uh go back above that five now let's see if they can get above nvidia got um an upgrade today which is why they're on the the rise you can see they're right down into our buy zone uh, this is a level that you know we've been uh talking about for a long time on nvidia waiting for well i've been i guess i've been looking i don't know if i want to talk about it that much but i've been uh waiting to to buy some nvidia for the long term and this seems like a pretty decent area even though you know these x tech uh stocks keep getting clapped lately doing okay today though let's get it so back above that five the target will be the 10 here watch this 10 if this 10 doesn't re-offer actually this 10 wasn't this 10 was actually absorption up here there was a big seller absorbing uh on the on the offer but if he if we get above that 10 you're going to see that big seller start to capitulate i'm sure back into that five range It's a, it's a chop zone. It's a... 
looking for volume to pop up. Look at the volume coming in on this uh, 4405 here. Starting to see a little bit of an increase. Widen this bad boy out. Right here on the 4405, we're starting to get a little bit of uh, volume starting to come in. This is why I shorted Delta yesterday. So Delta Delta was popping up yesterday. Um, and I mean, they have earnings today and I just grabbed a couple puts. I grabbed a couple 38 puts thinking like, okay, they're getting resistance all day. Maybe they'll come down tomorrow, right? Clearly not the case. They are getting some resistance up here. So this is one of those cases where I should have just been patient, waited for this morning. Premiums would have been a, a whole lot less. I think they're down like yeah they're down 89 percent not even worth closing them and they woke up like that so <laughs> nothing you can do we're still not seeing the buying in the NYSE start to match the weighted sectors. Um, you're just seeing like weakness in the overall market, it appears. Um, which, you know, is kind of weird. Uh. Oil's back up again today too, one hundred and one dollars and seventy seven cents, um, up about a little bit over one percent. Bitcoin getting some resistance here, back above these these uh, previous highs where it got got some resistance earlier, right in the same spot. I um, mean, you can see where a lot of volume came in on the way down, where they started to reorganize their inventory. So what we're looking for here with Bitcoin is for them to hold, if there is a pullback, for them to hold this VWAP to this 4485, right? If not, I might have to cut, cut sling and try again closer down to our, uh, our, uh, our, so they they're not able to get back above that 10 they are not really able to hold that five for very long either so uh support down be that uh zero zero that 4400 that's where the big buyers stepped in last time so let's see if they try to hold it it's kind of mechanical again right out of half back um of the profile and it's not like it ex it's not like that half back changed at all with this Oof. Someone's clapping the market right here. Like buyers buy it again on that 4400. Ooh, oil's dropping hard right now. It went from being up over a percent to just three quarters of a percent. So it dropped about half a percent uh, pretty quick. I 
big money flowing in here too. Take a look at uh, <clears throat> XLF because we've been tracking XLF, right? So C takes that B high by one tick. Okay, this thing is just jumping all around right now. So this is this is what I'm saying. Like inside here, it's just so choppy. It's tough to to be in a position. You're seeing XLF opened on a looks like it opened on a gap down and came up, closed the gap, but is now uh, getting punished. And it looks like it might go red here pretty soon. XLF barely up. On my screen, it shows red, but this is. Why can't it show me 24 hour? Oh, it is a 24 hour ETF, that's why. Close with this. Joke. So we've got a weak high. Right, mechanical high, one tick. So now, you know, we're looking at, I mean, really this, uh, you, you're seeing this huge, or not really huge, but just all of the volume is pretty much in one spot and it's moving up. We, we looked below, so we'll see, or we'll look to see here, C low is mechanical off the halfback. We'll look to see if the auction gets down here if more volume starts to come in, but as it looks now, it, it does look like someone is trying to absorb all of this, but you know, there's buyers that just keep stepping up, right? Buyers stepped up on the settle, buyers stepped up at this uh 4400, the half back. You know, so it's uh starting to look like a P profile, which is kind of what we expected, right? And I think I put it in the trade views, that's kind of what I'm looking for this morning. And I'm just looking to see which way this P profile is going to go, right? A lot of times a P profile can cause weakness, um, short covering, right? Short covering can can show that there's weakness in the market or, or uh, uh, weaken the market. Not always, but sometimes it can. And if this P profile, you know, if it, if it is short covering, which would mean that all of this upside is just short covering, followed on, you know, these sellers slowly moving lower and lower. Now that we're back above the 4405, right? We saw sellers on the 10. We saw sellers on the 8. We, we see sellers on the 5. We see a lot of volume coming in here. And, and this is kind of, I think, that, that battle to see, you know, got a lot of short covering, but buyers are stepping up. And these, these shorts don't want to be covering up here. They want to be covering down here, right? They don't want to get, um, they don't want to have to race for the door to try to get out of a position. Um, on the 5450 contracts traded to the upside on the 4410, would that be a lot of trap longs? Uh, it, it could have been a lot of trap longs or what it could have been is a lot of shorts just getting out because they thought this thing was going to run. Cause during the open, that a session looked like it was unstoppable. And so you get a lot of volume, especially because it all traded on the offer. It, it was probably, um, a bit of panic and them just getting out and because it's not new money buying right they're they're the open interest is going down so you know open interest we've got to get you know if i if i'm opening an order a new order that's going to be a, a plus one but if i'm closing an order it's not and so if we're getting less open interest up there that means it's not initiated buying it's actually just a bunch of buying with quotations from a seller just getting out of a position and so, but to me, it really just looks like absorption. It, it did look like buyers were, uh, it looked like a bunch of late momentum buyers. There's just no way to know for sure. But I would say, I would say probably trapped longs, Tommy. Yeah. But I would say they got, if they are trapped longs, they're probably gone by now because um, that when that B session came down, it came down rather quickly. And so there might've just been, you know, some liquidation during that. Because it came from, I mean, it went from, what was that high up there? 12? It went from 12 to 91 quick. Really quick. Viciously quick. Peter, good morning. Double R, what's up? Let's see if Bitcoin's going to hold this weekly VWAP here.
Another thing to look out for today too uh, on the ES is if it breaks, if it does break this low, there is some areas over here that you can see, you know, we kind of have this uh, previous balance, right? Where these, this kind of test up here. So, you know, if you were to draw it here, it brings us right down to our previous Fed move, our, our Fed move from February. Um, or maybe that was March. It was March. Yeah, it was March. Um, our March Fed move, 43.05. And so with all of this volume and kind of all of, all of this uh, value that's sitting in this area, if the market does come down and break, be careful that you know, you don't have just a bunch of responsive buyers lurking here and this thing could just rip back up kind of how we saw, um, kind of how we saw the other day. I won't be surprised if C, excuse me. I won't be surprised if C period pops the top and then and then trades back in. If they can't get some initiated buying up here, I mean the only buying is going on like just basically right here. If they can't keep getting some volume to the upside, it's going to be tough for them to to get this thing rolling. But in in reality, right here is just you know it's just not the spot. It looks like a decent spot to maybe try to fade. Look for that uh. Maybe that 98 level. Uh, even then, that's just more of a high risk. That's more of just a gamble, right? Because it's kind of just back and forth. You're inside value or inside. And this is kind of peeking into yesterday's value area. No, it's so super thin. And remember, we do still have single prints above. I just didn't mark them. I can mark them. So it looks like a big seller just covered right there. See if these sellers keep moving down. This is that previous low. Um, from the 108, the T2 low, slide back below it. So watch the half back. It's a mechanical spot right here. So let's see if they hold. We've got a lot of buyers coming in on this. Oh, oh, this doesn't look very strong to me. Good morning, traders. TPO is the only way to go. Let's get after it. Thank you, buying pop. That is true. Did anybody else take the short? Or... No, I said it was a bad idea. If it doesn't get back above 4,400, this thing might just fall like a stone. Until, until the low, really. Really, it's got to break the open air. 
if the market doesn't break the open, that's just going to tell us that the market's going to. Yo, Tommy, how do you say how do you say that guy's name? Could not figure it out even though you you texted it to me. It's Ilya. Yes, sir. Okay, nice. Ilya. Yeah, I really like him. Ilya runs the Tasty Trade uh Asian um desk. And I just, I think he's, I think he's smart. I think he's really smart. The episode yesterday was funny too. If you watched it yesterday, that, uh, that younger guy that runs their crypto thing, he, uh, he's just so bearish all the time. It's awesome. So the back above that 4,400, Ryan Grace, that's his name. Yeah. Ryan Grace. I like him too. Back below. So that 4,400 reoffers here. Let's see if they can hold it. You're getting buying. It looked like selling off of it. Now, now they buy through it. So really the selling wasn't very strong there. Um, still the resistance here, kind of this 4,405 to, to 4,400. And really there's not much support down. I mean, I know we've gotten a couple of bounces, but really the next support level down is, is not until... Like eighty six. That's like the the Globex low pretty much. Like this eighty six to that's where the volume's at. Still still looking like a P profile to me here, guys. So we're still just kind of waiting to see what this uh what this P profile is gonna give us. The difference today we've got we're getting a um, a lot smaller range than than we've gotten lately so that kind of tells us or or when when a market does something like this early on right it, it holds in a very tight range especially we're holding within the first auction a period what it normally tells us is that the breakout typically can cause the market to go into a trend or to an imbalance um how long that imbalance or that trend will last you know in no uh no um, concrete evidence saying this or that, but definitely something to, to pay attention to and note. Best followers, primes, and viewers on mountainviewers.com. Go Noe. Noe? Thank you for that. I'll have to not look that up. I'm not worried about getting viewers, buddy. I'm worried about giving good information. And having a good time. You know what I mean? That's what it's all about. Like yesterday we had such a good time. So much fun. Made the time makes the time go by quick. Makes the market go by quick. Sometimes I like yesterday I barely even traded. I just like was having so much fun. I just didn't take very many trades. Until you know, until we got off and the market just started to take a bath. Still the buying in the NYSC is not as strong as it is in the S&P. Look at that. I mean, nothing's really up like that that well, you know what I mean? So it makes me nervous about any upside trades because we've got like Apple's you know, barely up half a percent, Microsoft up 0.85, Google uh, 0.7, Amazon 0.5, Tesla 0.5, NVIDIA is up to almost 3% now. 
But I mean, other than that, like, even if you just look at the uh, things that are like PayPal's down three and a half percent, JP Morgan's down three and a half percent, Abby buys down two and a half percent, Lily's down one point one, Citibank is down one point five, Bank of America is down one and a half, Brookshire is one point two. You know, you've got a lot more. And we've got a couple couple things up. MasterCard, Booking, NVIDIA, Boeing, and Qualcomm all up above 2% here. Seeing some seeing some uh some action here. It looks like sellers are trying to absorb and, and they're getting uh getting taken over here. Look like some sellers try to come in on that five again. Buyers just scoop them up. They just give it back up, back to the five. Oh. Google's starting to get a little bit of a red candle. Tesla's getting a red candle. Facebook's getting a red candle. Microsoft, Google, Amp, Apple all getting little red candles here. Be careful. I just took a little short off there, off that 750. I've been trading like one lot trades all day today because it just like, you just can't trust anything and I just want to be in and out. On a day, on days like that too, guys, or days like today, like where it's choppy like this, there's no shame in just watching or just you know, trading a smaller size because you know it's going to be choppy, right? And if you're trading your normal size or you're trading a little bit bigger size in a choppy market, you know, it, it tends to uh, have those kind of areas where you, you know, you, you take a couple a couple quick losses and, and it's going to hit you for your day real quick and price is going to be right where you entered, you know, so it's going to be tough. Could you explain the main reasons as to why? Okay, so the question is, with price action being a two-way auction where price movements are mainly driven by imbalances in buyers and sellers, could you explain the main reasons as to why it matters whether the prior inventory is predominantly long or short? Okay, so the reason being is because, you know, big money doesn't trade overnight, right? So all of these traders, for, for the most part, right? Uh, and this is a, a generalization. You know, maybe some do, but mostly they don't. Um, and it's pretty key with the volume, right? We've, we've got like, what, 12 hours? How many hours do we get off? Uh, you go, what, three, four, five, six, seven, twelve. What's that, 15 hours off, right? So this is 15 hours worth of volume, and it's really just not shit. And so the, the reason <clears throat> that we... You know that we look for something like that is it, or, or why it matters is because most of these are weaker handed traders for the most part right and if they are weaker hands traders there's good odds of an inventory correction because what happens is when you know when the the big boys step up to the plate and the market starts moving more than you know two ticks at a time like it does in globex the fear starts setting in, right? Because there's people that just trade Globex because they like they like to scalp these little small these little small moves, um, and you're not taking much risk because the market in Globex really never goes on uh, a hardcore run. It did go on a little move to the upside yesterday, um, 
and then you know then it puked yeah it was like from right here from the cpi number it'll pop up and then it'll kind of puke down but in you know in uh and most times these are weak-handed traders so if let's say i mean even even here we had inventory pretty much 100 percent net long even though they um fixed it before the open and so what happened was you had weak-handed traders getting long all night and i could even it'd be even here to see um here you know we have these weak-handed traders just kind of running price up all night and then they just liquidate down before the open, right? This is one, two, three, four. So about about two hours before the open, they start to liquidate, brings us right back to the settle, and we open up just barely below the settle, you know? Um, and so this time they did it before, but let's say if the open was here, there would be good odds that they would liquidate. And if a seller came in, you would see that in inventory correction. And so that's why it's important to pay attention to this overnight inventory. Um, and that, that's what I that's what I use it for. You know, some people use it for different things. A lot of people get um, support and resistance levels off of it. I just don't um, because I don't think that there are very many big participants participating in the overnight session and the levels are just not uh, very clear. Right. That's that's why I don't include them on my TPO. I could include them on my TPO. Um, you know, you could I could look at all of them, but. You know, you start seeing too much. If you, you start putting too much shit all over, um, especially shit that doesn't matter, it, it's just going to drive you mental. What it can do, what it can do also too, is like when, when that kind of stuff starts happening and, and you start, you know, adding all the Globex. So let's watch this 10 real quick. More weakness up there, only 38 trades on that top tick. Uh, but what, what happens is when you start including all of these previous Globex, you're like, oh, they bought it here before, they're going to buy it here again. Well, these were weak-handed traders, and they only bought it there before because the big boys weren't out there. You know what I mean? It's like uh, you know, going, going playing a, a pickup game, and the people that are normally playing are taking a water break. You're like, ooh, I'm in. So you're on the court, but you know you're not supposed to be on the court. As soon as the big boys get on, get back on the court, you jump off, right? And that's kind of that. That's kind of overnight sessions or the pitch. I don't want Tommy to feel uh, not included. World Cup's going to be interesting this year to uh with uh Italy not making it in. It's hard to pay attention to important things if oh if you look at everything. Yeah. It's a, it's hard when you have all of these things on your chart because what happens is you get that analysis paralysis and you're you're like, "Oh shit, this could be it, this could be it, this could be it." And then it, it's kind of like, you know, when you've got a list of shit to do and you're not good at multitasking, or you have or you have a bunch of stuff that you need to do and it's just inside your head and it's kind of driving you mental and you don't write it down that that's kind of what it's like you know you're like fuck ah and then you just can't get anything done right not successfully you half ass everything you know it's not a uh, the right not the right move looks above again they're trying to buy that top tick 117 contracts traded up there There they go. Starting to buy.
Watch this 10 level. That's where that big absorption was from earlier. Still struggling. See, it gets up there and then boom, just struggles. Now we're back at the five again. Big battle here. Well, the previous high long block. Not as much, right? Because it's not as much. You know what I mean? So, like, even if the dealers are taking the opposite sides of all these trades, right? Or in the Globex, which a lot of times they are because Globex is very thinly traded, um, it's not as much to to absorb. Uh, that that's why a lot of times on the on the uh, open you see a little bit of a correction and that's this them fixing up their inventory to be prepared you know to to fucking face off and play against Cristiano Ronaldo. Even if he is for. So if they don't if they don't pop this top here again, I'm gonna try to maybe try another fade. Seems like we've been able to just kind of fade this market a little bit and they've been getting these little pullbacks. We are we are, you know, ish one time framing to the upside here. We haven't broken the A high though. See how it acts at this ten. You're getting um you're getting some offers building up on the ten as well, two hundred and two offers. And and so remember, especially as we get up to here too, um, on a day like today where the volume is you know pretty 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 weak for the most part, right? Here's this is 282, we'll call it three. This is 325, we'll, we'll call this 600,000. Um, let me look on the... Uh... Yeah, volume is, yeah, 560,000, right? So, so not, nothing super impressive. And it looks like people are selling calls. Oh, people are selling calls and puts today. So people kind of expect it to, to not go up or not go down. Let's see if D period's got the stones. There it goes. Watch the 10 here.
a lot of offers being are coming in down here, or up here. Apple's going green. Apple's almost up three quarters of a percent. I'm starting to pull back a little bit now. Big volume building up here. For bigger volume, see that ten thousand starting to form up here on the seven looks like seven three quarters there. Seven fifty actually. Apple starting to get a little bit green here. People getting confident. We're just watching this 10. There we go. We're, we're above it. Look for buying to come in. They're absorbing here on the 1050. A lot of offers getting lifted, right? A lot of people smacking that offer, buy, trying to buy, but not getting any price continuation yet. There it is. Getting into the single prints. But so remember when we get up here, right? We have a very prominent point of control that hasn't been visited. So maybe they visit it. We've just been in a poor high. But since we have these single prints, there's there's really what we're looking for is either just a quick, you know, capitulation from these sellers and trade all the way through it, or is it gonna start to fade or and or sellers gonna try to hold this level? So um that's that's kind of what we're looking for. Apple just took a, a fat boost, though. It's almost up 1% now. Right up above the CPI. Bitcoin's going as well. Good extent. Not a strong reaction off that overnight point of control, right? So, you know, most of that inventory is probably corrected. That's normally what that, uh, that's kind of a sign of. We are seeing a little bit of a struggle up here, though. Oh, shit. Okay, my bad. Um, let's see. What if there's been a huge long volume at the start of the session with low imbalance? Price only moves up a bit in mid-session volume. Um, trying to, trying to decipher this question. Um, uh, I'm not sure what you, uh, what you mean, to be honest. There's been a huge long volume at the start of the session with low imbalance. See if they're going to fix these single prints here.
Yeah, double R. I'm trying to, I, I'm not sure what you mean. If there's been a huge long volume at the start of the session with a low imbalance. Are you talking about like bid versus ask volume total throughout the day? Like a cumulative delta type thing? Starting to get a little bit of volume up here, but you got to be careful to see if it's coming in, you know, on the sell side or the the buy side. It looks like buyers are kind of struggling up here to uh, to get it going. But this is kind of what happened before. Then there was that pullback, uh, you know, down to like the two or something, and then boom, shot right up. So, like I said, it's not really an area that I would have participated. Look at a couple phase, but not really anything. Amazing. Fire today. My body like knows it's Friday or just assumed it's Friday. But like a cumulative delta thing, that's just a waste of time. Throw it in the garbage. Never, ever, ever, ever give a shit about cumulative delta. Because that has nothing to do with the auction. If you're if you're looking at cumulative delta, just look at volume. That's what that's way more important. Total volume. Who gives a shit which side it trades on? Just know where it trades at. Right? That's what we care about. We don't care about if it traded on the bid or if it traded on the ask, right? There's there's all these reports that come out at the end of the day that say like, oh, you know, 80 million sell side or whatever the fuck, you know, it tells you like the, the market maker's, you know, position. It's like, you know, it, it's just a waste. It's, it's, uh, it, it's just a waste. The only thing I use cumulative delta for is to find divergence. That's it. And I only use it on crypto. So, and crypto, I mean, crypto is pretty thinly traded here. That's, but that's it. Nothing else. Cumulative Delta for futures is um, just not worth your time or effort to try to find anything useful. Because you have to think about this from, from the perspective of these people that have this position. So let's say you're short the market, right? Or, or let's, say, let's say you're long the market, just to make it a little bit easier. So you're, you're long the market right here. And so when you came up, you uh, got these, you, you uh, let's say you filled on the, on the bid, right? You were patient, you got filled on the bid. There's negative delta, right? So there's a negative delta for your position, whatever, however many lots, there's negative one delta, okay? And now let's say you're up here and you want to, and you're seeing the market look a little bit weak. I mean, there's volume coming up. I'm just doing hypotheticals here, but you're, you're saying the market's looking a little bit weak and you just want to cover, but you just, you sell the bid again. So there's negative Delta. So you just took one whole position and your position was negative two Delta, but your position was a long position and it went up and both times it was negative Delta. That, that gives you absolutely zero information at all and then that's what happens to a lot of traders especially a lot of newer traders they get fixated on oh well, there's more sellers because more people are selling the the bid we have more negative delta it's mar the market can't go up it's impossible Tell Curtis I said he's not on his computer. Read a book or something. Okay, go ahead. Yes. Oh, hold on. So for a move to happen, the only thing that matters is the imbalance at the moment. Regardless of traded. Uh, 
I don't know what you're, are you, are you looking at like a footprint chart to see the imbalance? Okay, so you're just trying to understand the auction process. Okay, so so immediately eliminate delta from your from your brain, right? Don't worry about delta at all. It's not um it's not that important, right? The the process that you're looking for is is to see what the activity is is leading to, right? And so when we have a profile that's starting off as a P profile, which is normally indicative of short covering that breaks to the upside, we now we have excess, right? So we have a, a fairly balanced profile. If we um, we detach here, let me split the profile here. So we have this, you know, a balanced profile for the most part, excess to the upside, excess to the downside. Well, now we get excess to the upside and what we monitor for is continuation or success or failure of this breakout right and we were getting a lot of volume up here 8000 volume um and so if price continues to stay above this area what that's telling you is initiated buyers are coming in the auction right buyers that weren't interested down here are now off of the sidelines because they're in the breakout trade and they're looking to add to this and try to continue the market going up. We have, oh, we still have a little while until, until the next session opens up, but that's really what they're looking at. Um, don't, don't worry what side it trades on. It's not, it's not that important. That's why I know a lot of people look at footprint charts and like, oh, big imbalance. And yeah, you know, in a slower market, you have to be more aggressive. But in a in a bigger market like this, it's so easy to camouflage an order um, that you know you don't you don't want to you don't want to try to try to figure that out yourself, right? It's just it's just not worth it. It was kind of like we we talked about earlier. This um. Where was it at? Where was that big volume? It was at the 10, right? And we were trying to decipher, you know, is it, was it absorption? Or was it a bunch of uh, short covering at that level? And, you know, no initiated buying happened. And so then the market sank. Right? It's, it's impossible to know for sure. But what we do see it, we, I mean, we saw that it all traded on the offer, right? So it was all technically buy trades, but price went down. I mean, it was 5,803 orders on that 10, on the bid, or on the ask, I mean. So that, that lifted the offer. So buyers that lifted the offer to aggressively get into the market. If if you're looking at it on a footprint chart, that's what it would say. Um, I'm just looking at the DOM. So I'm I'm looking at it for like a total... The total session on the dom um but it, it's not that's not information that is useful what's what's useful about that 10 level is just that it is a high volume node and so when we got up to that level we saw a lot of volume sunk below it so now the next time i know that we visit it it's either going to act as resistance or we're going to see capitulation from the people that got in a position there and i want to try to trade against them right um or trade i mean trade not not necessarily against them but just you know if it is if it was a seller let's say if this thing came back up to the 10 and it actually was a seller who was absorbing this thing probably wouldn't have ran that a high that a axis would have held and you would have saw the market start to fade back down but we didn't see that you know we saw some good continuation and now we're about to close these single prints to the upside And this is an area where we want to be careful because, you know, we could see some sellers getting active in this area. This is starting to get into the value. I mean, yeah, 
this is technically the value area, but we're starting to get into the value area from yesterday. The real value. Big puts getting sold here in uh, the ES. Dollars getting clapped a little bit. Does that help, Double R? Did, okay. Nothing. Um, Double R, did you watch the stream yesterday? Fire starting to step up here. Coming up to yesterday's half back. What else was in here? Careful if we get back below this 18 quarter, I think. For some reason, it just looks like a weird level. But then, 18 quarter only had like, comparatively, well, I guess actually 17 quarter too. 17 quarter looks vicious. Okay, yeah. I mean that's that's really that's really it. it's it's a tough thing to describe because there's no with the auction market theory there's no um science to it right there's no exact it's not like if this then that it's really an art and it's just once you capture the grasp of it it's it's uh nice but it, until then it's uh it's a it's a tough concept to grasp and it's a tough concept to explain as well, to be honest. Like I, I've um, struggled with the explanation of it to make sense. It, it really is just, I think, yeah, watch, watch this 18 quarter, 17 quarter level down here, guys, if this thing breaks. Um, it, it really is difficult to, to teach in a static environment. Well, there you go. There's some, there's some, uh, bids right there on that 1950 144 lots jumped up and bit that somebody got stuck there's a seller stuck at 1950 here um you know it's 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 a tough it's tough to explain it i i struggle with it when i'm trying to record the boot camp big seller too uh 2050 The buying in the weighted sectors is so strong right now compared to the overall market. But you've got a, um, the breadth in the NASDAQ is 5 to 1, and the breadth in the NYSE is 3 to 1. Volume is super light. Fucking hell, they're freezing.
Oh yeah. No, I mean no. Yeah, no worries. Don't. Oh, yeah, I know how that goes. My house is kind of wild right now too with the uh, monsters off of school. Still holds that eighteen quarter, seventeen quarter. Those. Are, that's kind of the level I'm watching on this retest. I want to see them kind of backfill that area, or just don't go down and test it at all. That'd be nice. That will that will show a little bit of strength. Still holding. Bitcoin looking to break up. Held that VWAP nice. Eighteen quarters still holding strong for now. Eighteen quarter, seventeen quarter. So there's a little bit of strength there. That's what that's showing. We've, I've been, I've been staring at this eighteen quarter for a while now. There's some supply here. See what we get. Bitcoin's looking good. What else did Luis say he was in? XRP? XRP's trying to break out of its... Here as well. Bitcoin's going up. Normally, I mean, they've been pretty correlated lately. So, Let's see what we get here. Still holding. Deb on Facebook. Thank you for the follow. Oh, did it, Jamie? Okay. Um, I mean, so the the way, the way, so, um, Jamie said, understanding how the delta formed helped her understand the auction process. So, um, we can we have an example. So, just look at the good volume coming in at the top of those single prints, showing that these uh these sellers are probably done with that position. So then you look for the next position for them, you know, probably to get busy up here in these 30s up to, I mean, 28 is the uh, Globex high. That'll be the target to the upside if they're able to get up there is the Globex high. We have six minutes, so it'll be interesting to see if we open up with some single prints in the same exact spot that we put single prints in one day again. And then, you know, some single prints here at the bottom as well. But basically, I mean, it the that way that this auction is moving is like this. And so you see, you know, you see a profile that, you know, sometimes these uh these profiles are shaped like this, right? And it shows the the orders that that trade on the bid and the orders that trade on the ask, right? Bid is on the left ask is on the right ask is the buy side bid is the sell side i think that's the issue because when you think about the word bid you're thinking buy right oh if i want to bid on something or if i want to, if I want to bid on something i'm going to be buying it the difference is is when an order trades on the bid in a two-way auction the order is actually an aggressive seller moving down to sell the bid and a buyer passively buying the bid. So imagine if in an auction, 
right? Let's let's do, and that's this is why I really like to use the farmer's market as an example, but let's do an, an auction, right? And so this guy's got his, you know, 240. This guy's got his 240 hertz monitor. This guy's got his 240 hertz monitor. This guy's got his 240 hertz monitor. This is the auctioneer, right? He's going to be calling out the price and then you just have the crowd right bunch of people just kind of sitting in the crowd all over right so this guy says he's auctioning off these tvs he but he's just auctioning at a price and it's up to these sellers because this is how a two-way auction works or how it would work if two-way auctions were a thing in real life besides in the market we're coming up a little bit here now too watch this watch this globex high um and so he starts going 100, 200, 300, 400, 300, 500, right? And all these people are bidding, 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 um, bidding. But they're not they, they're not able to buy, right? Let's just say. Because he's just offering it up. Offering, offering, offering. All right, he gets to 1,000. Someone says, I'll bid 1,000, right? This guy's like, 1,000's good for me. Boom. Moves down, gets that. Now he's out, and he moved down to get out. But these people, they're like, oh, this thing could keep going higher. This guy's This guy's being a chicken shit. Why is he getting out? But then what happens is this guy said a, a thousand, boom, a seller moved down to sell. And now everyone's like, this guy's like, do I hear a thousand one hundred? And you're, everyone's like crickets. They're like, ah, should I sell it that high? I don't know. Or should I try to buy it that high? That guy just got one for a thousand. Maybe I should just wait. Right. And then he comes down to a thousand. Right. And people are like, ah, it's going to keep coming down. Right. It comes down to nine hundred. Somebody bids, boom, this guy moves down, right? And then this guy's like, do I hear, uh, do I, 9,100, do I hear uh, a thousand, right? And someone's like, shit, it's going to go back up. They buy it. And then all of a sudden, mad dashes start. And this is where all these buyers jump in and they're all trying to bid on this one TV and they can run it up, right? Um, it's a... Uh, it's just a complex issue because you'd have to imagine that this auctioneer that's sitting here and this crowd that's sitting here is basically, you know, eventually never ending. These people are all selling their computer monitors, right? And imagine if, you know, this guy was selling one for a thousand, this guy, this guy bid, he's like, I'll, I'll bid, a, I'll bid a thousand here. Right, maybe this guy's waiting to hear that he moves down to sell it, but then as soon as this guy moves, somebody else comes in. They're like, "Boom! I'll take that spot. I'll sell one for a thousand as well. Who wants to buy it?" This guy's like, "Do I hear a thousand? Do I have thousand? Thousand one? You know how they do?" And you know that's that's kind of how it is. And then sometimes you know what happens is the auction starts to go down, and then these people start to panic. Boom! Sell. They're like, "Oh shit! I need to sell this thing's with seven fifty. Oh shit! Five hundred. This guy sells." And then nobody loads back up except this guy's still sitting here and he wants a thousand. And so what happened is price moved down to shut off the selling because if we get to that situation, you know, back to the textbook where we have an unfair low where sellers don't want to sell down here because it's not a fair price. Fair price is in value and that's why we track value is this is what can help us determine who's in control, right? Who's being more responsive or, um, and, uh, normally that's going to be who's winning the auction is the responsive entity. So here we go. We open up on some single prints, a pretty decent amount of single prints here. Um, if you ask me, well, I see a little bit of, uh, a little bit of profit taking up here, maybe a little bit of backfilling, but haven't really seen much backfilling either you know that 18 quarter still held strong still hadn't didn't uh didn't go down to to rebid um but so we get this unfair low and, and then no one wants to buy price will just drift back up into here price will trade trade right people sell it people buy it people sell it people buy it price auctions up up here people are selling it people are buying it but it gets up to this unfair high you know maybe this is two thousand. And everyone's like, yeah, not worth it. I don't need it that bad. Right? Um, and that's that's the the biggest key of the auction process. You have to think about it from 
from that perspective, which is hard. You know, one way, one way that actually Jim Dalton explained it to me, um, I think it's in his book too. I can't remember if it was in it, if I read it in his book or he explained it in the intensive, um, but, but he talked about a supermarket and how they have, you know, certain products that they'll mark up, you know, they'll, they'll mark on sale. And then after they're on sale for a little bit, they all get scooped up and then the market moves back up. It's the same, same kind of idea. Market or the Apple's really juicing the market here. Apple's up uh, almost one and a half percent now. Tesla's ripping to two and a half percent almost. So what, what matters for price to move on the chart is who is being aggressive, right? So you have, you have the price, the current price, let's say, let's say the current price is, we'll just do 25, right? Current price is 25. And on the 25, you have this guy who's looking to buy 10 monitors. Well, on the 50 up here, I'll just say 0 0.25, 0 0.50. On the 50, you have this guy who's looking to sell 10 monitors. And so one of them is going to have to be the aggressor. Either this guy's going to have to move up to buy or this guy's going to have to move down to sell. Someone's going to take a, you know, a quarter point, uh, a quarter point issue, which is why a lot of people think electronic trading is, is shit because you used to be able to buy on the bid, sell on the ask back in the day in the pit. Um, but your the ooh, nice. the um the it doesn't the the imbalance that's what I'm trying to say the imbalance doesn't matter what matters is the volume total volume at that level at that price that's how you're gonna measure it uh, success or failure don't worry about it if it trades on the bid or the ask that's just giving us a little bit of insight but. Uh, you're trying to you're trying to get a step ahead of yourself right don't worry about that imbalance you can you can start to worry about that stuff you know when the market slows down a little bit but when the market is like this there's just no no point to worry about it we're just paying attention to to value we're getting you know close back to yesterday's value weak spot right here looks like probably go for a fill Let's see if we get that reaction off the point of control. So if we don't see a strong reaction of selling off the point of control, that can tell us that we have acceptance in yesterday's value area and there's good odds that we trade to the high of yesterday's value. What helped you the most was understanding positive delta is a market buy order build on the ask and negative delta is the opposite. Yeah, it is. And it's, that's the issue is that you think bid and you're like, oh, it traded on the bid must be buyers. And it's like a mental, it's like a mental block up. Kind of a kind of a strong reaction there, but we still have the single prints below. So I'm not really, I mean, I'm not really looking to get short above that CPI number, anyways. But I really don't like the market till it gets above fifty. I mean, if it if it holds inside value, there's a good uh, there's a good opportunity for a, a trade back to the opposite edge of value here.
AMD is like in a little balance down here. I'm gonna get into our buy zone. Yeah. My buy zone. No. I want to get a lot of these chip makers because I think, uh, or not a lot, I guess, but just some. Because if I mean, they're kind of protected against everything. You you know these chip makers. If if you're a crypto person, you know they need these chips in order to mine these new coins, and then you know, the the way ahead, unless you know all of a sudden electricity becomes something scarce and we start rolling around in you know covered wagons you know these uh these it's kind of a race to see who makes the best chips you know tesla's starting to make their own chips apple starting to make their own chips so it just makes sense that um you know some of these companies are gonna succeed off of it and you know taiwan's been doing a really good job for a long time making chips so it just makes sense is NVIDIA American-made company, Uncle Stacy? Yes. Okay, I thought so, yeah. They're in uh, Santa Clara. Well, they were the last time I went and visited my friends that I used to work with. I don't think they've moved, though. I'm pretty sure they're in the same place. Yeah, I, I mean, that's just a solid company intel makes chips too and intel supposedly is signing some deal with uh the u.s so you know they, they'll probably do pretty okay oh everything is flipping red here on my my little map In the last candle, I jumped into a AMD P. So I think I got in just before things started to really dive. Still watching that 18 quarter level, guys. That's a level I'm not going to be convinced of a short, really, until we get back below that 18 quarter. That's where buyers stepped up last time. At least it looked kind of like the impulse area for me. That E high is mechanical, one tick above the Globex high. So, you know, selling off the Globex high. The pullback, though, is kind of interesting. You're looking at about almost 10 points off of that high. A fairly, fairly strong reaction up near, you know, inside yesterday's value. If we, if we get below, really, the 18 quarter, there could be a little spill back down to 15. That was the last time buyers were active, 15. Oil's up 2% still here, turning green. Gold's turning green. The VIX is, the VIX is down 7% today, but it's starting to make a little bit of an ascent here. What the fuck just
Biden is saying that they're going to raise the ethanol above um, 10 to like 15% in gasoline. And that's going to be a, a way that they're going to combat the fuel prices by raising that ethanol. I'm not an expert at cars, but I'm pretty sure that is not good for the engine. Everyone's cars will get ruined and everyone will have to buy a Tesla. God, if this corn could just break out, just one more little move. So yeah, so okay, so that that makes sense. So to to see. To see that, right, or to um, to kind of visualize that you're really just looking for that continuation and, and paying attention to value, right? And that's by by understanding the value and understanding how these kind of uh, market profile principles work. We're we're seeing our our previous day's value. I mean, even though it says here, um, I would say you know from here to here. We're seeing we're getting two TPOs inside. A lot of times that shows acceptance inside yesterday's value. The only thing that's that's deterring me from just getting along right now is because it hasn't captured this point of control and held it. We do have a fairly weak reference compared to the overnight right selling off of the Globex high. That seems fairly weak. Um, so we could still get a strong reaction off of that point of control. If we do and it takes us below, you know, half back or below these single prints that's going to kind of tell me that the buying is not as strong if we if we come up here and just tap this point of control and then kind of just continue to hold and start to keep getting volume you see volume 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 so we had the building value here it breaks out to the upside and people buy it breaks out again people buy it breaks out again people are buying it right and as long as price is staying above that volume and that's letting us know that there is initiated buying, probably a combination of short covering, because I do imagine that, you know, people got too short yesterday. It just makes sense. Um, and, you know, that's kind of why I was expecting a lot of uh, upside today or just a, a bounce of of upside because of that. Right. The. Uh, it just looked like the market got emotionally too short, right? When it broke, it looked like everyone's like, I need to be short. This is, this is the crash, right? Because it, it feels like everyone's waiting on the sidelines. And I see this all the time in, in YouTube videos like, I'm in cash, I'm in cash, I'm in cash, I'm in cash. Like, you're a bitch. You know? Like, why are you in cash? Because you can't trade the downside? Like, what is that? You're not a trader then. You're just an investor. So stop getting on here and saying that you're trading. If you can't trade both sides of the market, then what are you doing? You're investing. Right? You're going to buy something, hold on to it till it goes up. That's called investing. That's not trading. And so everyone is just waiting, right? They're so emotional to be buying the dip or selling the break because they're trying to cap capitalize on that crash, right? They're trying to hold on to the baseball as Mark McGuire smacks it over the fence. That's what they're trying to do. They're, they're, and it's embarrassing, to be honest. Like, you know, and, and this is what happens. You know, simple as this. A lot of these people yesterday, um, when this thing broke, got just stuck right at the low. And it's like, what the fuck are you doing? 30 minutes left in the market and you just decide to turn your computer around and get short? And that just shows you that, you know, the pure emotion of the retail trader. They're, they're just looking for that big, big move instead of understanding value. Right. And that was just a really just a look below 
and just you know just emotional right really emotional if there was real selling right if 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 we had real selling when this spike from the previous day came we would have stayed below it all day but we didn't we just scooped up value and and then eventually broke but when the, when it broke no buyers showed up again no sellers showed up either look how look how thin that is sellers didn't show up till here they were late they were so late they waited till the previous day low broke and and that's just you know impatient and and emotional and and that's what if we're able to identify these emotions of the of the competitors of our competitors here right cuz we are competing against them a big big order trade on the 22 there um but if we're able to identify the emotions of these we can kind of just imagine what's going to happen today based off of how yesterday went does that make sense so we've got to just really the the main focus your main focus if you're not understanding things is only focus on value and where is value going right now value is lower right because we have yesterday's value and we have four tpos down here four three four three four three four right all through here and only two up here so as we spend more time up here it's the odds become better that we start to build value higher right but until it starts to spend time we can't really confirm we're starting to get below volume and coming coming down a little bit here to, to backfill some of this thin area and volume's pretty light today too so it's not not uh not super surprising that we're not just going on a rampage but it, this is what we talked about when when we were in c period that a lot of times when these p profiles break to the upside they can cause these trend days and that's what we're seeing start to form right we're in an imbalance looking back towards yesterday's value and if you go t2 right two days ago the value was inside each other's value right and then up here we have that kind of three-day balance we had this look above tried to build value in there and then really just kind of you know fell the market but, but you could feel the emotion in the market yesterday and the reason being was because of that cpi report i think right that cpi report caused this huge move to the upside it was a look above the previous day even right Came up all the way up above and then fell back in range and traded all the way back through the low that's emotion that's what that is that doesn't just happen right because market the the people in the market have an objective right they have a, a job that they're trying to do so if their if their goal is to push the market below this low and hold it below that low well then that's what they'll do right but with that big break to the upside and then a big break of the downside that just tells you their emotion on both sides and when if you remember yesterday this this move here look at ten thousand off of that prior day high someone was just selling the shit out of this it popped up and as soon as it came back down it just fell like a stone all the way back into range value and balance that's yeah that's it you just balance it or value is really the most important thing that's what it's all about it's all about value paying attention to value and where value is going and if you can once you start to understand value on a full scale you think you're looking too far into it a lot of times that's that's what it is and that's i think a lot of people's biggest struggle when they come from a traditional uh either like a fundamental or a technical background of trading and then they come to the profile they start seeing like you know i'm explaining it's just value that you need to pay attention to and they're like well what i thought i have to track this and this and this and this and fib and moving average and blah blah you know all this bullshit and they're like it's so easy and they're like what do i do and then i'm like you just sit there and be patient and let the trade come to you in my joe biden voice right guys it's simple just be patient and pay attention to value. I'm not very good at impressions, obviously. Um, but you know, that that's what it is. And then once you start getting the focus on value, you'll start understanding how value starts forming 
as it's developing, right? Because we only know where value is at when the auction is done. And, and this auction is regulated by time, right? This auction is from 9.30 to 4 o'clock Eastern time, Monday through Friday, given holiday breaks and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, it's, it's governed by time. And so we're able to track developing value, but we don't know exactly where value is going to finish at the end of the day. What we, but what we do know is that the value from yesterday, where buyers valued it yesterday and where buy, buyers valued it, buyers and sellers, I'm just saying buyers because, uh, you know, it's just um, easier. But you have action here yesterday. So responsive selling, which is what it looks like so far because we're breaking back down uh, into these single prints, but it could just be backfilling. Really, we're watching the 18 quarter, which is where we're at now. We're about to give it up. Still holds, though. Oh, so close. So close. Still holding. Still holding. Still holding. What a level, huh? My goodness. 18 quarter just beast of a level. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's this, that's what the key here is just to only focus on value until, until you get it down and then you'll start seeing some of the other nuances that come that, and that's a, that's a big thing that's so hard to teach and so hard to, um, keep track of, right? Because a lot of times when you're learning something, you, you get these nuances, right? Let's say, let's say when you're boxing, right? Um, it's tough because I don't know if everybody boxes. Everyone gets the concept of boxing, right? But in, in boxing, a lot of people think, okay, I need to look where I'm punching, right? So I'm gonna look at this guy's face, right? But one time Mike Tyson said, you know, a funny thing, he's like, can't punch me with this face. And then another thing he said, they asked him, do you, do you look at his feet? And he's like, you can't punch me with his feet either. I'm not looking at his feet. And so what he's doing, he's looking at his shoulders. That's kind of what they teach you when you box is to look at the shoulders and look at the hips. And a lot of times when, when these kind of nuances build, when you, when you do it over and over or, um, or you start to see, you know, different people, you box against different people. You'll see certain things that'll key in, like, oh, when this guy's hip turns square to me, his cross hand, if he's right-handed, let's say, is going to be far away, and so I can swing to the right and go for the body because he's going to have to turn full, full towards me to be able to block it, right? And then you do that a couple times, boom, hit him with that right hook to the body. Same thing. He does it again. You step out, boom, right hook to the body. I'm a southpaw, so my right hook is to the body um third time he does it you do the same thing but this time he's expecting it drops his elbow to block to the body shot knockout hook to the chin right and that's kind of like that's how that's how the nuances develop throughout your trading watch this 18 quarter here guys it's still holding um you know this is kind of the nuances that develop here i think a little bit of gas here what's going on um gold's picking up oil oil's not really doing much oil's not, oil's coming down a little bit um you know what i mean does that make sense it's that those are the nuances that are so hard to keep track of because they're they're you know it's like um you've got to explain them while you see them And that's why I think honestly the best way to learn even even the boot camp, you know, as cool as it is, it's not you're I don't think you're gonna learn as much um when it comes to nuances until you're you know watching the live sessions. And with that, um, and that that's what the boot camp's all about. The boot camp is literally all about teaching the basics and how to track value. And if, because honestly, until you track, until you understand how value is moving, you're, you're not gonna, 
the, the concept is not going to land in the spot it wants to land. 18 quarter. Ooh, it actually, oh, no, didn't trade yet. Oh, 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 they're selling it again. So many trades on this spot. I'm over a thousand. Two thousand. Oh, there it goes. 18 quarter breaks. They give it up, ladies and gentlemen. Down to the 15 we go. Oh, buyer step up. And give it up again. Tesla acquired LTUM mining company. Ukraine's armed forces. Ukraine, Ukraine's armed forces command says Russian forces ready to attack in uh, Don Donetsk. Yeah, I won't even try the other one. Zap o Riz. I uh, that's the best I could do on that one. And didn't they just say the war was over last week? What a shocker. I honestly think this is like a, a thing that they're, they're trying to convince enough people to buy the dip. And then once once they have it, then they'll slam it back down again. They, they did it before. I mean, they, they did it in January, right? We, we look at the ES. Um, well, how's that put going? Oh, good. Still, you're up. You should be up, right? Or did you close it already? Second to me? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm up. I'm, I'm, I'm not up a lot, but I'm up enough. I'm up enough that if it lost, I don't know, a few, uh, lost, I don't know, 15 cents, I'd still be fine. But that's the, that's the option price, not the share price. Right. I'm pretty much, I would say that if it started to break up, I would probably break even or come close. But it's still, it's kind of meandering around. I probably, I was debating on if I should sell it earlier, but I was like, nah, I don't know. I'll see it out, see how it goes. It's yeah. kind of just, I mean, honestly, if you look at it, like it's freaking flat, <laughs> like dead flat. Yeah, that's what it looks like. It looks like it's just kind of going back and forth. But even where it's at right now, at the level that it's at right now, I'm still, um, you know, 5% up. So I figure if it if it starts to climb really fast, then I'll, I should be able to have enough time to get out. If it goes negative, then I'll, or, or if it goes even slightly negative, I'll dump it. Or right before, anyway. At least I'll try. But I, I'm kind of banking. I'm just looking at these numbers and seeing what's going on. The, the P counts keep climbing. So. Yeah, it, it looks, see. it looks kind of weak. It's honest. pretty, it's pretty weak. I don't think it'll hold. I, I honestly, based on the, the value chart, I, I feel like it's going to head toward POC. And then once it gets there, I'll decide, do I want to stay in or do I want to see if it runs through? And then I'll probably just take the win. I mean, I've had what? This will be four weeks of wins Yeah. every day. Well, every day that I played. I didn't play when I was in Disneyland, just saying. <laughs> you did play when you were in Florida, though. <laughs> I did. That is, that is true. Um, but so here, here's the ES here, and you can see that this is where you know they they slammed it down. The big Fed meeting in January, um, and then a pop, and and people got all excited, but they didn't get enough, so they dropped it back down. People bought the dip because they felt like they missed the first dip. They bought it all up again, bought it all up again, trapped, and then they got just absolutely smacked. Right, kind of the same thing here, except for a bigger squeeze because I think people got a little bit too short but we had a lot of shorting up here off of this uh this previous level i wish we could switch it to ph only but um you know we ha we had some people get short here and so now we've just got to pay attention to the current trends that are that are going on and we're kind of you know in this little downtrend on the daily so until we break yesterday's high which is a fairly long way up it makes sense for sellers to be active you know around these 29 or well let's see here what's this like 26 to 
32 area because that was the value from yesterday so they can expect some you know some selling there this e low is very mechanical guys right at the uh right at that d half back right above our cpi number but you know what i mean like i mean and and also we could draw another another level here and this is more of a, a longer term level right because we could bounce around in this area You know, it could it could kind of bounce around inside this area, but intraday, you know, on the daily until we get a break above that level, we are looking, you know, fairly in a downtrend. We've had a little bit of break of one time framing, right? This one, this was that bar I was talking about in the uh, um, trade view last night. The last time we took the high and then the low, we had a gap down. I mean, this thing's not showing it on the RTH, but show it on this one. This is that thing I, I found. It tells us just on the 30 minute, the 15 minute, if it's a green or a red candle. It's kind of cool. Um, but so here's what I was talking about. We had this stay, it took the high and then took the low, a gap down, shot up in a balance, right? Or three day balance. We took the high, took the low, and we're just inside today, just kind of hanging out, forming, you know, a little bit of balance now. At this point, if this day doesn't take the high or the low, we'll just be in a two day balance or even, I mean, we could even incorporate this third day just because it's inside that day as well. So this day is kind of encapsulating all of the days. Seeing a lot of buying and energy right now. XOM is starting to get some gas. Looks like some banks are doing okay. Where's XLF? At? XLF is green from the open, but still below yesterday's uh, range. Some trades like it felt like a punch from iron there. You get the volume real quick. Volume's less than yesterday, uh, but it is picking up if you look here on this upside, right? We started off 18% less, 12, 10, 9, 7. So as we've been moving up, the volume's been picking up, but it's still less than yesterday, but still picking up.
till I say it. Apple's starting to get some gas here. Up almost 1.3, Microsoft 1.3, Google's up over a percent, 1.3, Amazon 1.8, Tesla 2.0. Oh. Trying to see oil turn down a little bit. If these buyers are showing up here, starting to get some strong buying in the weighted sectors. Just the unweighted sectors are uh, lagging behind here. Everything's looking green now. Mechanical high and a mechanical low on this F period now. We saw good volume come in down there below that F open. But it, I mean, it kind of looked like it was buying on that half back too. So it's interesting to see what, what's going on right here. Remember that E high is mechanical as well. It's just one tick above the overnight high. Russian inflation's at 17%. Watch below, I mean, below this 18 quarter again. They, they didn't, couldn't get much steam rolling right there. Yeah, see, that's why that... The buying off half back right there is what kind of tossed me off. I wouldn't really count that F low as a cessation of one time framing it, but it does look very mechanical. And, you know, so th there's odds, good odds that it, it will get taken out. Uh, you know, the, the, the big thing here is just, I mean, it's just like, I mean, it's just getting so slow and very mechanical already. We're not even that late into the session that we might just get one of those days where we just kind of slowly grind up and then get a liquidation and then, you know, back and forth. You've just got to be careful today uh, as you trade, because remember, we've got all these people that are just sitting on the sidelines waiting to make their move, right? So if a big dip happens... You know, be careful because there could be, you know, a lot of people jumping in to try to buy the dip um, or a lot of people trying to sell the break. Right. There, there could be a lot of action back and forth. So it's uh, you've got to be cautious on a day like today where volume is low because it only takes one big player to decide, you know what, I've had enough of this shit. 
you know, maybe they've been buying the past two days, right? They were on the inverse side of this. And, you know, especially if we start to get below this T2 low and start to close, there was definitely a lot of buyers here. Settlement only is two days long, even though I heard they're changing the settlement to one day. But I just haven't seen the, the follow through with it yet. We get below this T2 low, you could see some selling into the close as this person starts to liquidate. And that's even what you could see on this way up, which is why it's struggling so much, is if this guy's long up from two days ago, as soon as he's getting back to close to break even, he's like, ah, fuck, liquidate, 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 sell, 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 right? Trying to get out of that position for as close as he can to, to break even, right? And you, you imagine, I imagine that if he was a buyer here, he was probably a buyer here, and he's probably a buyer here. And so it seems that this is probably his area to have an opportunity to flush, right? If if initiated buyers show up and we go up, great, because he's going to be happy for that. But if the market starts to slip too far past this low, that's where we're going to see him capitulate, and that could cause a break of the open or break of uh, today's low. What is going on? All right, double R, we'll catch you later, man. I want to watch this 18 quarter level again, right? That's kind of an area we've seen some good response off of. Oil starting to go green a little bit here, starting to pick up. Oh, never mind. I'm looking at the wrong thing. They're going down. They're still up about 2.5%, though. NASDAQ's up 1.5. The Russell's up 1.2. The Dow is... The Dow is kind of lagging behind here. Uh, it's only up 0.39. Going on, kind of boring day. Still got fifteen minutes until the next uh oops, next session opens up.
Ooh, we're starting to get some gas. Some buyers are stepping into the market right now, it looks like. Apple's almost up 1.5 here. Let's see if they break this high. Short lived. Still not able to break over that 24 right there. That seems to be an area of re uh, resistance where sellers start to get active again on that 24. Kind of a mechanical high again on that F though. They sold it right off that F or right off that E half back or the E open. I I mean, excuse me. Watch this 24, they break it. That's that E open. Watch them to sell that D high. It's like 2650 or something. That would make sense for them to try to sell that. They're struggling here on the 25 again. So we're back up into this chunk of volume that we had earlier during the E session, right? Uh, up here on the 25. So the key here will be to see if we can get some continuation. Like I said, I don't really consider this a cessation of one time framing as it didn't really, uh, you know, one tick is just not enough. It is a mechanical low, so you know, good odds that it could break it. But we need to see this volume get, you know, keep coming in up here, keep coming in, keep coming in in order to get continuation. We have weak references on both sides right now and we're just kind of trapped inside of the auction with uh, mechanical sellers and mechanical buyers back and forth and eventually one of them is going to give and we know with shorter term time frame traders and small hander traders we get a lot of um quick capitulation right so let's say if they were buying here off the the d half back and the e low if we come down and break it with some force you know, they're inclined to just pull one of these and close and then sell. And the same thing on the upside. We break the E high, right? And they maybe they're shorting it. They're, they're shorting off this D high, but maybe they're shorting off this E high. If it breaks it and holds, you know, they're inclined to just turn around and buy it. Back to the 25 again. They pop it up on that 25. They're holding. Watch for volume to come in here. A little bit of selling off that D high. We already expected that. These orders are just crawling in slowly.
Mark, Apple's almost up uh, one three quarter percent. I mean, everything is just looking good right now, except for you know J.P. Morgan and Bank of America. J.P. Morgan's getting smacked, almost down three percent. Worthless. The VIX is getting crushed here, down seven and a half percent. We need volume to come in up here. Only 217 contracts or 212 contracts straight up there on that last tick. Oh day, very slow day. This kind of looks like short covering as well, too. To be honest with you, um, you know, as much as as much as we have been getting some initiated buyers above this value, it does kind of look like these little pops are just short covering pops, especially with this kind of weak low uh, left behind. It doesn't look like there's much supply out in uh in the market today. Bubble Bitcoin's just kind of hanging out here. It's going to get a little bit more buyers up here. I'm going to spend a little bit more time up here as well. There they go. But watch that impulse. That impulse pretty much came from 28. A little bit of backfilling here. So that was right to that point of control. So if we if we start to continue to get downside. No, that's a fairly strong reaction. You you would have to see it get back under uh, half back though, um, and half back would be uh, um, where is that twenty one quarter? That's half back from yesterday. Back so back to volume here. All right, you can see that volume. Uh, this is where it starts to pick up. We have a thin volume above us, but we did get some bigger volume, 717, 644, up there towards the high, but couldn't sustain it, couldn't really hold price up there. So it, bids come back down, and buyers try to scoop this up and see if they can uh, see if they can rally the troops again, or if that was just a blow off. What we're looking for here, what I'm what I'm looking for to, to really convince me of some upside is I'm looking for the, for the, this BPOC and TPOC to, to move up, right? That's what we'd like to see, we'd like to start to see. And we've got a new new period in three minutes, so we're going to see the TPOC shift up most likely 
Um, well, actually, no, it's not gonna, because it's gonna be volume. So it's gonna be down here. So back down to the 25 this was a big level earlier you kind of see that that bigger volume note on our uh, current bar profile on that What earnings do we have next week? Let's take a look. Let's see some big names that could shift the market. We know the last week of the month, we have um, all of our tech stocks. Thursday. So we got Goldman Sachs, Wells Fargo, Citigroup, TSM. Morgan Stanley, United Health, PNC, Alley, Rite Aid. Uh, so, so mainly just Goldman Sachs, Wells Fargo, Citibank, TSM, Morgan Stanley, and United Health all report tomorrow. Citigroup's expected. Citigroup and Goldman Sachs are supposed to <laughs> report negative. So here goes our next period. Let's see what we get. Opening up right on the twenty-five, which was kind of the the impulse where all that volume came in before we popped that 28 and then 28 took us up to that 30. Not really, you know, a super strong reaction off of off of the highs yet. Friday, oh, the Friday there is one. So Monday. You know, No, so yeah, there's nothing on Friday. One day we've got Bank of America. That's really it. Tuesday next week we get Johnson and Johnson. LMT, that's Lockheed Martin. Procter Gamble is on Wednesday next week. The NASDAQ. Brookshire Hills. Nothing really too crazy until that last week of the month. That's when you get like all of the the bigger S and P five hundreds is that last week of the month.
Back to that 25. So look for these buyers to try to hold here. Let's see. I'm so ready to get to the East Coast and just get my house and get all my shit set up, you know. It could just happen... Pretty big house. All right, Adam, we'll see you later. So it holds the 25 for now, starts bouncing up. Let's see if it's going to continue this one time framing to the upside. Volumes coming in. Look at that big volume right there. A thousand coming in right there at the high. There they go. They break it. Next level up is going to be that 32.75 right here, 33 basically. Good volume following us up here. Just we're not making as much progress now. You know, the market's starting to get a little bit slower. Um, so it's not making as much progress to the upside. But still volume is getting that continuation and we want to keep going with, you know, the volume. There's a lot of orders being added on the 30 here. 
which is fairly close to price, right? Only a point above. A lot of stuff's getting the gas here. Apple's is pushing up close to 2%. It's up one three quarter percent. Microsoft's up one and a half percent. Tesla's up two and a half percent. Amazon's up two and a half percent. Google's 1.8 percent. Nvidia's two and a half percent. Walmart two and a half percent. Mastercard two and a half percent. So you're getting a lot of uh, bigger names up here. Boom. God damn. That was a that was quite the move up and down, huh? Holy shit, what was that? Careful here, guys. That was interesting. See if we get some continuation here. Oil starting to go back up. We're starting to see uh, Apple's turning red. Microsoft kind of slowing down a little bit too. Be careful here. That was weird. Just a big, you know, kind of exhaustion right there. That was like a blow off. Right? It's like they had absorbed too much and then little uh, price uh, recreation. If this excess holds to the top here, um, a lot of times when we have big excess like this on the top, it's telling us that that seller is still active. And, and it, I wouldn't be surprised if what we talked about earlier, if this seller's here, the seller's here, what's he doing right here? Covering, right? He's been covering. Or, you know, buyer, buyer, same idea. On the opposite side, though. Opposites, uh, opposite spectrum, I guess. Back to the impulse here. The impulse is more like 29. Got 5,000 volume while that 29, and now you're starting to see 2,000 volume. So volume is still getting up here and can, continuing up. You don't really need to, you know, to look, look for a downside until you start to break all these levels. And like we talked about in the trade plan, you know, above the CPI, we don't really want to be short. Below the uh, CPI, we don't really want to be long.
Continuation off that 31. Buyers still stepping up. I think sellers just got nervous. You might see a hard short covering rally here pretty soon. If they if they can keep this up. I mean, if we get above if 44.59, you would see a, a large, large rally that could get a bunch of people trapped long for the long weekend, which would make sense. Here they go. Give these sellers a chance to sell again from up here where they didn't get a chance earlier because they just got all got bought in quick. That big trade there. On the trade plot. Oil still gassing. Bitcoin's getting you know, like it's getting a little bit of support here. Consumer discretionary is getting smacked though. So is healthcare just for right now, I guess. Buyers stepping up. So when we're when we get something like this, guys, and we're seeing this kind of pop, what what you're looking for is is these continuation. Look, boom, there's more continuation. And this is, I mean, just turning out exactly how we wanted it to turn out. It's turning out into a trend day off of that P profile that broke to the upside, right? We just had to be patient, wait for it to break, and then get on board. There's been a couple of opportunities because we've got some pretty deep rotations on a, a lot of these moves and we're still seeing volume come back up here 34 uh on that 34 oil's up to 103 it's up two and a half percent as well that's not great up above a hundred dollars a barrel 103 Apple's almost up at 2% here. What's up, Patrick? Top oil traders to reduce oil purchases from the Russian, say from Russian energy company Rosenfett.
Everything looks green. Apple's almost over up 2% now. They just keep backfilling here. What do we got? Um, 10 minutes until the next period opens up. I know when we're looking at this, right? We're like, oh man, this thing's going to fall. I could just feel it, right? And it might. It, it's just you've got to start to fight that that feeling that tells you I want to short when we're one time framing up and and we haven't really showed any sign of weakness yet um you know it, it like for me like you know I've ha I have this like inclination to I want to short you know even though I'm in a long trade but I I feel like I want to short from here because it just looks weak right it just it's not moving up the way that I wanted it to move up um, we do have four TPOs up here at 25, but the volume doesn't really match the way that I want it to, to move up. Right, 13K here, we still got 15, 16. So it, it's a little bit lighter, and, and I understand, but I want to see um, before I before I would get short, right? I would want to see the price push back down below all of this volume. Because if it's just every time it comes up, get some volume, goes up, get some volume, gets up, goes some volume. I mean, same same thing over and over. There's no reason to short something like that instead of that. That's just you trying to force yourself to be right or to or trying to be right. Right, you're shorting something that's going up because you want it to go down, not because it looks like it's gonna go down. And you've got to push that through your emotions or push that through your head. Like, you know, I got to stop trying to to tell the market what to do and and go with the market. Bitcoin coming down to this uh, low volume area. So look for the response here. If, if you get a flush through or if we start to backfill this volume on Bitcoin and then look for that continuation higher. You know, I, I got to say, one of the hardest things to do that, that I get sucked into is when, you know, you say, like, you, you need to get above this to go long. You need to get below that to go down. And it's like, well, why wouldn't I go low now to get the low or go high now to get that high? And I think that I fight, I fight myself trying to understand that part. But then, I mean, I, I get it because I do it. But it's your instinct is to just go for it, you know, rather than use logic, use, well, the, the margin of gain is, is more if I take it from here, low or high. 
Right. And that's the thing is like every day there's going to be, you know, probably one, two or three decent setups that if you're patient enough to wait for them, that they'll happen. Right. So like my first long was from uh, 44, 19, and then I've added and, and taken profit on the way up and have one lot left. Um, what? And then, um, but you know, when it was, when it was down here during, I mean, really just when the D broke that a high, I really wanted to get long, but I really wanted to, to get that confirmation above that CPI before I decided to get long. Cause that's, I mean, that was just where my trade plan was at, but I mean, there was definitely opportunity to, to get long, you know, in D period. But there was just as much risk during during D period when it broke to come up and come back in, right? It's just, uh, I mean, see how thin the volume is here. It was just, it's just a matter of letting that trade come to you and executing the trades that are on your trade plan. You know, if you have, um, like for me, a lot of times I like to see, you know, see us get above certain things. Um, to get me interested because it lets me know that the market is putting value in, in it, right? If it gets above something and starts to hold, that's letting me know, okay, the market's putting a little bit of value in this. So, you know, I can put a little bit of value in this as well. Which makes total sense. Right. Yeah, because you're, you're playing off the psychology of the other competitors, right? And if they're placing value in it, then, you know, we can also do the same. Right, right. Well, I, I've done pretty good for the day. How'd you finish? Um, up 425 in my funded account. Dang, nice. Just doing, uh, I, I mean, I took a long from 4507, took it all the way up to 4412, pardon me, 4707 to 4412, added one. Got out at 44.16, stayed out, and then I got in at 44.23 and took it up to 44.29. Nice. Good day. That's with two MEF. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like you're you're making, you know, 500 bucks on a on a a day with just MES, right? That's such a uh, low risk um, in comparison, right? And still able to make just as good of profit margin as most people are looking for a day, you know? 500 bucks a day, anyone that you offered, you know, hey, if you, if you learn this and you can get on the computer for a couple hours in the morning and make 500 bucks a day, they, you know, they would probably take that deal but for some reason in the trading world, um, you know, people are like, ah, no, 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 that's not going to do it. I need more. Like, damn. 500 bucks well, a day is 100 grand a year. Well, yeah. you know what, though? I, I get that. I, I get that psychology because I think I was wrapped up in, oh, the MES, I'm making a dollar twenty-five, bro. <laughs> you know, it's like, come on, I'm not making any money. But you do way less trades there's less stress yeah there's less exposure and then on top of that you're you're just kind of you're going for the trade and not getting out too early yeah you lose some but the the stress that it creates that that so you can do that think fast think slow all in the same motion it it, it helps you it helps you not worry about it for me for me it does right because I don't sit there, I mean, and I don't, I don't typically like to leave a trade 
but on an MES, I'm comfortable if I put a trade in, I, 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 the first thing I say after I put my trade in, I have accepted the responsibility of whatever happens in this trade and I let it go. Now, if I'm way up, if I have one and I'm in a long and I think I'm gonna, you know, and I think it's gonna come back and I'm up like 20 ticks, I, I might just get out because I don't have the chance to watch it and keep going farther up. Right. Or, or vice versa, down, you know, whichever way I was choosing. It's just hard to allow myself to do that on the ES because it's such a huge, like if it goes down four ticks, that's 50 bucks. Right. And I don't, does it, does it, it's, I don't look at it like 50 bucks. I look at it like, guy, it took me a long time to build this on, in my MES. Why am I going to fuck it up with my ES on a, on a trade that I just think is going to go up just because I think yeah. it's going to go up and I don't even let it play out. Right. That's why I always say, like, you know, you've got to have some good cash in your account to be trading the ES. At least, I would say at least $5,000 per contract because, because of exactly what you're saying. Like, you know, 50, if you've got, you know, even your 50K funded or your 150K funded account is like, um, like a $5,000 drawdown, right? 40, 4,500 on the, on the, uh, funded account. Yeah. So 4,500. 4, what is that? Um, Forty five hundred. That's like, shit. That's a lot. Forty five hundred. Point six. Four five zero zero divided by. Um, Here comes H period. H period. Mechanical high right off that F high. Almost shit, 90 points. Almost, yeah, 90 points. Almost 100 points. Yeah. But that's with if you were to trade one ES contract, right? And so you have the margin, one ES contract. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Right. Yeah, but I mean, the. If you were, yeah, I, I suppose you could, I mean, because there's times when I put on um, multiples. I, I Usually I do things in twos on the MES. So sometimes I put on multiples and I'll, you know, like when I did my buy back in, or not buy back in, but added to the one I did the first one this morning, I put one in, but I only put it to go up 10 ticks. Mm -hmm. Just to cover, you know, just to give me an in and an out. Right. Yeah. So that I'm so I so I'm kind of getting in and taking profit and getting out. I don't know. I just I like doing it. I like doing it that way. Bitcoin's getting a little bit of a push down here. See if the market follows. The market is kind of invested. There's kind of a big red on Apple right there. Starting to pick up a little bit of steam to the downside here. There they go, nice recovery. So watch this 29 level, that looks like the level here. Where that volume came in right below that H open. Chase, are you doing a are you doing an Apex funded account or a, a eval account? No, I'm just doing TD oh. options. And you're making money at it so far. Yeah, he's been doing good. This is your you're actually put trade in real money, or are you still in the, still in the paper? Um, I I do both, just because that way if I feel like I'm overplaying in my reel then i go to paper well when i'm actually able to maintain my emotional status <laughs> then, I, then i switch over to paper but sometimes i mean we'll see i mean it's so far i do uh, i, I kind of i just switch back and forth i'll just say that i was uh 
I was talking to Denise earlier today, and I was telling her because I lost 130 in my funded account yesterday, and it just makes me so mad that I can't trade anymore. I mean, not mad because I lost, but mad because I don't feel that I should have allowed myself to get because I, I kept getting in at the wrong play. I I, uh, I would get stopped out. I didn't have time to watch the trade. So, you know, did I feel like, oh, that's my problem? Or, and then, you know how you, you, you it says don't put the blame on anybody else. I put the blame on this one guy who keeps coming to my office because every time he comes to my office, I always lose that trade. It's like, fuck. <laughs> it's just bad luck. Jesus, bro, get out of my office. Yeah, so then I just had to stop right there. And then what I, what I do is I turn off my internet at home so I can't access it and go back on. I just say, fuck it, you know, just do something else. Well, that's kind of what you've got to do. Like, you've got to have something in place that will be able to limit you from, you know, over trading. Because a lot of times when we have those days where the market doesn't trade our way, we're more inclined to be like, okay, well, you know, I can do it. I, I know what's going on now. And then you get another one, that one loses. And then, you know, it just that capitulation starts to happen. You start trying to make it all back in a single day. And this uh, is one of the reasons why I tried, why I switched to single, single contracts is because when I was doing multiple contracts and I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I do sometimes do multiple contracts. Like this morning I bought two, but if you do single contracts, it removes a lot of that concern because then you're, I mean, even in a big swing, you're down, you know, 10, 20 bucks, whatever. Um, as long as it, as long as the uh, the contract price is pretty decent, and then it's not as big of a deal. But like when you have like five contracts in, and there's like a you know a five cent swing, that's 25 bucks. So in your mind, you're like, holy shit, I'm making, I'm, you know, I'm losing him. It's not gonna work. It's not gonna go. It's not gonna do what I want. And then and then you're fighting yourself you're like should i sell should i not sell should i sell because it's if it when it, once you get in it's that initial i'm already underwater let's say i'm up underwater 10 bucks right as soon as i get in it sort of rides that line and if it starts to dip in let's say you're down i mean yet the other day i was down i think a couple hundred dollars and at one point i was just like what am i thinking but then i held on you know and i brought it back into positive and i ended up i don't know 30 bucks up or whatever it was but it's that whole gamble of what am i going to do i i have not only have i lost the money that i potentially had but now i'm actually down beyond that and it's like you're fighting your own instinct to save your life yeah if i get to if i get to minus 150 and typically i, I question myself if i have three bad trades in a row i question whether or not i'm even in the right mindset um if I get down 150, I'm out. But usually it's like between 100 and 150 dollars is about the max I want to lose in one day. Because sometimes I don't care what it doesn't seem like. It's like some days, some days it's like all my trades are good, and then I think, okay, well I could just do one more trade, and then I do one more trade, and then I lose, and then it's like fuck. Well, if you put a, I've put a limit for the most part. I put a limit on. If I if I keep winning, if I do a trade and I hit it, and if I do a trade and I hit it, I'll let it keep going all the way up until the point where I'm like, okay, like right now I'm up 425, which is really only up 380. Um, the the total the total is uh, I'm done. You know, I don't I don't need to keep going and keep trying to get to a thousand or whatever. Because if you do it the same way, you'll do it the same way if you lose. So I created a, uh, I created a little a, a chart, uh, a spreadsheet, and uh -huh. and and on the spreadsheet, I I said, okay, if you invested twenty five thousand, or if you started with twenty five thousand dollars, and you had invested fifteen percent per day, so fifteen percent of whatever that whatever your total amount that you have in, fifteen percent per day. Your return on that 15%, any idea what your return on that 15% to be able to get a 100% return in, in, a, in, a, uh, in a year? Probably eight days, seven so, days. So it's $25,000. Your first investment would be like seventeen fifty, I think is what it is. What, how much of a return on seventeen fifty do you need to have 
to be able to have a 100% return on your original 25000 at the end of one year? 1%. 2.1%. Yeah, very low. So if you get in and you bet, you know, every single trade you did up to $1,750 every day, and you were only ever looking for 2.1% return, I mean, honestly, I don't, I don't think I've, I mean, I've sold definitely at loss, but I've, I'm never looking at a 1% and going, wow, that's great, or, you know, a 2% and going, dang, I did great today or whatever. We're all looking for that 20 or 15 or whatever. And that's the point is, is you're always trying to edge yourself and, and eke out or squeeze out as much as you possibly can out of that thing. But it literally is 2.1%. If, ha- if every time you did an investment, you got a 2.1% return, you'd be 100% up after a year. I think that the, the fringe person who looks at this, in, unless you like do the exact recommendations of you can't trade for two months until you have done in trading and you've been positive for a month or something of that nature the brain the mindset is oh i can make a thousand dollars a day it, it, i don't care what you're doing like when i first started seeing this i was thinking oh this is going to be this is not going to be hard <laughs> <laughs> i mean i'm literally thinking this this is how dumb i am and i'm literally going god this is no big deal i had i, had, I got my thing set up I fucked this this chart up so many times. I'm sure Brad was like, "Oh God, Dad's calling again." Jesus Christ, he fucked something up on his on his chart. And then finally, it, it just it just clicked in like December that you're trying too much. You're trying to do too much. You're trying too hard. You're thinking too much. You needed to slow down and think of it in think of, think of it in just once you get to that amount. That you've got you you're done you have to be there has to be a a finish line that you stop but if you are of my mindset i had to find something else to do to 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 make me stop because i i focused on it. that's why reading those books was like totally helpful because it it totally changes your view of what you're looking at For me. Here goes the upside. Look for 39 be the next level to the upside, I think. That's what I got, Mark. 39, 25. I think it's also hard when you're watching other people do it and they're successful at it and you're not successful at it or you're you're not as successful at it that that hundred dollars or that twenty dollars or the no you know the sim account getting to you know seventy five dollars I think that you look at it as guy okay, that's all it is as opposed to guy that's seventy five dollars exactly you're, you're looking at it you're you're looking at something that's positive with a negative lens on it you're like right with a negative lens right you know it's like you you look at you have a winning day of 75 dollars. you're like well shit if i was trading the es it would have been 750 dollars. but you know what's not taken into account is the emotions and things like that and 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 it's like uh it's like contra how would i say it like it's like almost like contrasted with the regular market because we have a lot of, I mean, pretty much everything you see or anyone that shares online, they're like, oh, look, I made, you know, thousand dollars today in four minutes. And you're like, well, shit, if this guy can do it, it looks like a fucking idiot. How come I can't do it? You know? And it's like, it's just not as, um, it's just not that easy. It just really just isn't that easy as people make it seem up. Really just kind of miss. Well, 
it also it also makes you unhappy with the amount that you made. Right, and then you feel unsatisfied, then you start to overtrade, and then uh, right. you know accounts get. We're gonna be Santa Cruz on Monday. I don't think so. We'll probably come back Sunday night. I don't know that. I don't know for sure though. Yeah, pack a lot. Yeah, I think if anything could be hammered home, I think it should be. You know what? I heard someone talking about this, and I started doing it where I where on my funded account I do I'll only do five trades on the yeah that um, the max I would do would be five trades, and that's with one one um one loss, and sometimes I don't even do any, but the if you set a limit of that because he said that he was. And I could be wrong, but I think he said that he was doing trades and before he could actually get the one written down that he had just done, he was already in another trade, something like that. And then that's when he changed over and went to, he only does five trades. So it's like, oh, do I really want to put a trade in here as one of my five trades? Right, exactly. It really makes you, it really makes you conscious of... It's a decent idea. Yeah, that's it's actually I, I don't know who thought of that, but I started doing it. That was I think uh, it, Pop yesterday. He was talking about that. Yeah, that that there that idea there. I heard him say it before, probably a month ago. But then, yeah, he did. He brought it up yesterday. He actually was specific about how he kind of got frustrated because he was over trading, and then that then he found, well, guy, do I really want to put a trade in? And I was thinking to myself, yeah, that's. That's kind of what I do for the most part. Call that chasing my tail. Yeah, yeah, right. You're just looking for that next trade to fix to fix what you screwed up. Or because you got out too early. Or wh whatever, out, well, to fix, I that's the thing. Out. It's the same thing, yeah. same premise. Right. Oh yeah, right, 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 right. You didn't play it correctly. Well, like Brad says, even a losing trade can be a good trade. Because it, like, uh, I sent him a picture of a couple of trades, and he goes, "Hey, that was a good trade. You got in way too early, but it was a good idea. The trade idea was all right." And it's like, it helps you understand. You know what? You're right. Because I got into I got in a trade yesterday, and I, and I don't remember what number it was at, but it dropped it dropped like three points down. And then it went up to where I wanted it to go. But it wasn't a good trade. But it helped me understand, guy, why wasn't I patient? Why didn't I, I, I mean, I knew where my tick was. I knew where my tick needed to be. I knew where I wanted to get in at. I just didn't want to get in at it because I didn't want to miss it. Oh, man. And, and at work, there's a lot of times when I'm sitting there watching it, watching it, watching it. And then someone will come in my office, so I can't, I can't do it. And then I walk away, go do whatever it is I got to do, come back to my office, and sure as shit, if I'd have been in that trade, I would have got it. And but I don't look at it the other way, you know. I I, I no, and I I never look at it the other way because I, I'm not that Hi, negative um, of a person. But if I got in a trade and then all of a sudden it went down, I don't go back to oh good thing that someone came and bothered me because otherwise I don't lost money. I that is never even quest, you know crosses my mind. But it's true. If, you know, it goes both ways. There's many trades I would have lost if I had, if someone had not bothered me. And that's such a key thing too, like to to understand that, like like we were talking about earlier, the guy that comes in your office and he's bad luck. To understand that, you know, it's not his fault that you lost the trade in it, but it does feel like it. Um, but being able to to really understand that emotion because that's the that's what's happening is you're feeling that emotion like this fucking guy comes to my office every single time I lose it's his fault when in reality you know the odds are, I mean the chances are just the chances maybe he is bad luck and I I you know I do believe in luck um, but it's in reality it's you that initiated the trade it's it's you that. Put the risk on this guy has no idea what the fuck you're doing 
he's just doing what he's doing, especially because you're doing it at work. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, some people, like, if I'm in a trade, I try not to talk to anybody. If someone comes to my office, I say, get out of my office. If I don't have to talk to them right then, I say, get out of my office. I'll be with you in 50 minutes. Because some people, the information that they're giving me, it occupies a part of my brain that I need to, that I need for what I'm doing right now. Right. And I have, at least I have the luxury of telling people, hey, I'll get with you in a minute. So that they, they don't think I'm blowing them off. They think I'm, okay, they know, they know, everyone at work knows what I'm doing. <laughs> it it's not, it's not like it's a, it's not like it's hidden. Is it because you're yelling when you do something bad? <laughs> no. No, I mean, I've, I have my own office. There ain't nobody in my office. So but that doesn't mean they can't hear you yell. I mean, yeah, but that, I mean, I, I, I've lived with I, you. I, you can't I, hide things from me. Yeah, I might, I might, I might uh, wear my heart on my sleeve a little bit. Oh, imagine that! Oh, your heart yeah. on your sleeve? Seriously? Oh, I would never. You know never what I started doing? I started, uh, I started smiling. Just like when I get in a trade. <laughs> so feel super tired. So that that way, I'm comfortable with my trade because I I can't believe that that was uh, one of those things. And I I'm trying to think of what book it was in. I think it's in Fast and Slow think fast and slow and it's put a pencil in your mouth side to side so that you're the the, the point is sticking out one side the eraser is sticking out the other side and and make a decision about anything and it will more than likely be a positive decision if you put it if you put something in your mouth like a lollipop where it only sticks out one thing and you got to close your mouth at the end make a decision about anything and it will more than likely be a negative decision and if thinking about that like that has helped me be more objective about whatever it is I'm going to do and happy, you know, and accepting of the decision I have just made. So I just need to carry a pencil with me at all times. Or whatever. Fucking ruler, a pen, or just think about something that makes you smile. I don't know. I, I talk to probably 30 different people, new people every single day. And every single time I do it, when I go out to greet them, I have, a, I always smile and chuckle when I, when I see them because it instantly puts warmth in them and then they are open and then I will get what I want. The thing that makes me smile the most is when my trades go up. Yeah. But when you're not doing a <laughs> trade, yeah. <laughs> So then that means you're you're a pain in the ass when when you lose. No. Which we all are. Because I know I'm not that I know I'm not that happy when I lose. At anything. That's the only way. I guess it all depends on what you're used to. I tend to take my frustrations out of my mouse. I get a pile of dead mouses. <laughs> <laughs> With Lincoln, it used to be Nintendo controllers. Yeah, right. I was going to say, here it comes. <laughs> yeah, it didn't have to just be Nintendo because it was also, I'm trying to think with the Xbox. Xbox. I watched you smash an Xbox controller one time. I've, I never played Xbox with you. Uh, Nintendo, oh, the man. original Nintendo. We used to play soccer and I would kick his ass yeah. royally every time. I, I had and spare, spare controllers. Ready we to went, go. We <laughs> went through about a controller a week. Yeah, that was fucking... My God! I'm not. Thank God, I'm not that bad. <laughs> Lucky you're not my kid. Yeah, you wouldn't bad. be getting a new controller. Hey, 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 what you what you needed? What you needed, Lincoln? You needed you needed a uh, pencil in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, right. That would have that would have. I mean, think about it. That would have solved your problem. All of those issues that you ran into as a kid. Oh man, I just I. You know what it is? I just I'm not a good I'm not a good loser because. In my in my head, it doesn't translate. I've never been uh, never been one of those who is accepting of uh, of losing. I've always been that kid who, if I lost, that meant I needed to try harder and harder and harder and harder until I didn't lose. For me, losing was about figuring out how to not how to not lose like create some system that would keep me like, I mean, like stupid little things. Like when I, when I would walk into a house, someone else's house 
and I would take my sunglasses off. I'd set them down. And there were, I can't tell you how many times I'd go to leave and I'd be like, oh, frick, what did I put? What did I, where did I put them? Like, I have no idea. And so I started like making a conscious decision when I walk in someone's house, I put down my, my sunglasses or maybe I would leave at night and then I would leave my sunglasses. Anyway, so I, when I walk into someone's house, I put down my sunglasses, I put my keys with them because then I knew that I couldn't leave the house without my keys. Oh, and that boy. way that, and, and it was just little tricks like that. So for me, it's always about creating systems to overcome my, the problems that I have. Well, that works well for when it's just you on you, but when it's on, when it's, uh, for me, it was never me on me. It was always me against somebody. I mean, I'm sure I lost my fair pair of sunglasses though, but like playing sport. Because for you, it, you felt like it was always a competition. I never, I don't, I just don't think that way. The competition is always with myself. You're competing against everyone else. I'm competing I'm always trying to be better than I was five minutes ago or 10 minutes ago or an hour ago or whatever. I'm always trying to make, improve that, that thing. And if you're always competing with everyone else, then, and I hate to say this, but you will never always be the smartest person in the room. It just isn't possible. Right. So, so if, as, if you keep trying to be better than everyone else and as I get older, I'm, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, I'm seeing myself through more difficult i mean more issues that i'm running into just of all the little things that i'm i'm not being better at that i'm trying to i mean a, a part of that is instilling it in your children getting your children to be oh you know if you do this then you'll be able to blah 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 and it's all of those things that you're trying to fix in in yourself that you i mean you're like ah, i'm too old i can't that isn't going to happen but the idea of you being able to be better than yourself is a much and I think now that I think about it, Matthew McConaughey said this. He says, "My hero isn't isn't, you know, my hero is me in ten years." And then he said, "When when and when I get there, am I my hero?" And then he said, "No, my hero is now again. In, my hero is me in ten years." And if you're always trying to figure out how to be better, the better you, because I, I mean, I suck. I mean, like you killed me at, I mean, pretty much everything physical, every day. If I literally bet my entire self-esteem based on the concept of me being able to work out and be better than you, I would, I would have been a freaking basket case. Yeah. Well, just so, just those competition things, because you were better at me than. Oh. Well, but that's the point is, is that I, I, I felt like I would focus on the areas. And for me, I've always been somebody who is trying to focus on the areas where I know that I can get better and be better at it. But some areas where I don't, I mean, uh, clearly sports was never my thing, but it was, it was always something that I um, had to just sort of acknowledge. I suck at that. That's just not me. Well, you know what? You, you picked up on where you were good at and you focused on that. And that's, here, that's, the, that's the advantage of being that self-realization that you, you really... It took me a long time. It took me fucking 35 years to realize that that competition was me, not, not everybody else. The, the funny thing is, the, I can't, I am, I'm in the same, like when I'm driving on the road, I'm competing with every other car. So it's not that I don't have it. And, yeah, and the, so. thing, the thing that in my brain that has made me successful is about like constantly wanting to understand everything. I mean, the reason why computers make sense to me is because I'm always like doing something to try and learn more. I mean, I freaking have rack mounted servers at my house that I run programs on because I just like to mess with shit. I just do. It's just who I am. And it makes you, and it makes you, it fills that void. It but helps you understand, put you in that mindset that, hey, this is making me a better person at, at what I want to be better at. Well, and that honestly, that's how I ended up in the career that I'm in is, is that I did it. And it was like, Oh, that, I mean, it's a phrase that I use called guessing in the right direction. I'm not, I'll be honest with you. I am no better than any other Joe Schmo. I mean, maybe I'm a little bit better than math than some, but I am not a great programmer. I am by far not a great programmer. I mean, most programmers that I know probably are better programmer than I am. Uncle but Lauren, I am better than you? Tenacious. I would say absolutely because he's more focused. He has the ability of actually being able to break things down and look at it more pragmatically. I am, 
I mean, honestly, I will take a snippet of code and I will freaking beat that thing to, to hell. Like, I want it to do this. I'll go, okay, well, what does that mean? And I'll play with it. But like reading a manual to learn how to program, hell no. Couldn't do it. Couldn't <laughs> do it to save my life. Yeah, I couldn't do that shit either. So that's, I mean, that's the only reason why I became a programmer is because I could, nobody's going to be able to tell you, hey, you can't mess with that code because that's the whole point of coding. So as I learned how to code, I would just like take something and I would keep playing with it until I understood it well enough to get what I wanted out of it. Well, it was two things, being doing that and then also being able to see the bigger picture of what is, how can I use this to, to make things better for me? And then those two things and my ability to be able to communicate because most programmers aren't, you know, conversational. Right. You know what I would, that's funny you say that because I was just going to say that what, what, what you don't lack is the ability to convey what you're doing with your fingers from your mouth. Well, t technology people are good at talking, but they're only good at talking about technology. I can take right. I can take very technical things and break them down into relatable. Like I could I could explain something to you very yeah, very technical. Yeah, you can explain it for someone like me who doesn't understand exactly. that shit. Right. Yeah. That's actually a you're, you're, that's actually a quote from Thinking Fast and Slow. Um, let me find it. Go ahead. What What was the quote? I'll, I'll find it. Um, about about um, about breaking stuff down like that. So there's a there's a there's a, a concept and I can't even I can't think of what it is but there's a concept of being able to take a knowledge in one area and may, make it relatable to another area and usually the areas that you are able to do this with are periphery perfect like they they butt up against each other so like I can learn how to make grass grow and that's going to affect my ability to learn how to make plants grow so like there's all these concepts that are that are relatable but for me I can take a knowledge of how to make uh, an engine work and turn that into my ability to be able to relate with somebody in a conversation. Not even based on the engine, just being able to understand the concept of it and being able to turn that into something that is... I, I, I don't know of a real good well, way of totally, describing yeah. it. No, you, what, you're, what you're doing is your ability to, let's say... And, and I'm going to point this out. We're starting to get... One second. We're starting to get a little bit uh, below this volume chunk up here, guys. So be careful if you're in a long... Yeah, I'm not in any great. Um, you, you once made a TV turn on when you would walk in the bedroom by pulling a string that you had run with pulleys and shit to the TV. I don't know if you remember that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that ability to think outside the box to do something that was a little bit intricate, but also a little bit uh, mechanical, leads you to, well, if I could do that, then why can't I do this? And then you would spend a little bit more time trying to do, I don't know, take apart a, a fan and get it to work again, or to take apart a calculator or whatever it is you did. You took all kinds of shit apart. Extrapolation is the term yeah. I'm looking for. Being able to extrapolate an understanding in one area and being able to apply it in a completely unrelated area. Right. You, you used to do that all the time. So I think that, that your brain, the ability of your brain was always thinking outside the box and was never trapped because other people would have just said, oh, I can't do that. And then that would have been it. I mean, that's the other piece of guessing in the right direction. Because I, because I am able to take that knowledge and be able to sort of like say, well, what if I did this? And then sort of perpetuate that. Trial and right. error. I mean, honestly, most of my life is trial and error. Right, but trial and error with the uneducated person is more trial than, more, more error than trial. But that's the point. Where it's guessing, you, it's more... the state, guessing in the right direction. That, yeah, that's that, the thing, yeah. is I look at it and pragmatically I can say, well, this seems like it should be the next step. And then I would take that step and see what it did. Yeah, I don't. I, I think you did this. I think what you did is you looked at all the different directions you could go, and you did that thinking in bets, and you went with the one that had the best odds. That's what I typically. Think. But it was innate. So, it was something right. I didn't even. I didn't even think. I didn't consider. Yeah, you're right. But you're you're still evaluating all the different responses that can happen from different things oh, yeah. that you do, 
And then you're going, well, this one here has a 2% above all the other ones. I'm going to do that one first. Yeah, I always, I'm always evaluating all the possible, possible scenarios. Right. And sure. what it does is it makes it so you do it on everything. Well, I still suck at trading at times. Today is not Every, my best day. Everyone does. My, <laughs> I did a really good trade earlier, and now I'm I'm just fucking it up left and yeah. right. Yeah, you know what? Sometimes I think that it's better to lose a trade out the gate because then you go fuck, <laughs> and then you think twice about jumping in another trade. Whereas if you win, you go, oh, that one's right, so this one's going to be right, and you don't you don't uh, quantify it like you should. Yeah, it's all all learning experience. What's it going to do? Run down to the 20? Um, well, we got a lot of support oh, what, earlier up at 25. What, so yeah. look for that. Look for that support. I mean, here we had a lot of uh, lot of interest here, this 28 to 25 area. So there's the, wouldn't even consider that a break of one time framing yet. One tick, tick below. Two ticks short though, but one tick below. A little bit of buying off that low that's pretty mechanical you're seeing a lot of uh, volume start to pour in here at the low see that thousand kind of backfilling this little weak area next target down is going to be that 25 look for the reaction off that 25 if they give up the 25 there's good odds that that uh 16 gets taken but they'd have to when when you see it it given up you'd want to see it given up with some tempo right you'd want to see it break the 25 and then kind of hustle down to that 1650 if it just kind of drags ass all the way down which it's kind of doing now uh, the odds start to favor the other direction and think about when you're when you're trading right um when you're trading and you're waiting for a trade and you're saying oh 25 was a good support maybe that's where i'd want to buy and your price didn't come back down to there right since g period and so in h period you got long because you didn't think it was going to go and now i period comes right back down to where you were looking to oh, there it is. to get um to get long at and now you're negative because you were impatient and didn't really let the trade come right What's up, Braveheart? Um, yeah, uh, we could do an update on on the bit, the old Bitcoin. So really, we're just waiting for value to form higher. You see how much value is down here? Um, good on. So we see how much value it. it oh my goodness. Of, yeah, value here from yesterday. We see a lot of value down here. Volume, they got above. They broke that VWAP and were able to hold that VWAP. So on this move down, we're, we're looking, um, looking at level here. Flat line. So that 45.93 on this pullback, if it comes down, that's where we should see some buyers step up. That's above kind of this uh, this value that we've put in down here on this low, right? So it should, if it does come down here, I mean, if it could reject right here this low volume node, but if it does come down here, here's just be a little bit thinner. So yeah, so if it you can see the low volume node right here, if it does come down in this area, we should see buyers show up and start to see a bounce. If it starts to drift through that and get below that weekly VWAP and gets you know really down into here, you could see a little bit of liquidation back down into value. Um, I'm in a long position on Bitcoin, um, and I sat through this first rotation and kind of this this sideways trade looking for some upside, but 
you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to just hold it forever. If we get really below that weekly view up by too much and start to hang out down there, mm -hmm. I'm going to be done. But I am looking for this 42 because above that 42, we have value up here and a little bit of balance. This is um, the ninth and the 10th was the weekend, right? 11, 12, 13, is that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, but we have this kind of this balance zone up here. And so I kind of am expecting a little bit of resistance right there. And because we don't have a lot of support here or anything really in between, the rotation down from that, as you see people start to take profit and sellers start to become active again, as they've been on a lot of these moves, it uh it makes sense for them to push the market down, right? And if we look, you know, for the most part, we're still still kind of trending to the downside for in in a in the past week or so. All right. But there's still room to the upside here is is uh something that you have to make sure that you're paying attention to. All right, you could draw your trend line a little bit tighter if you wanted to, but I mean, there's still room up here to where sellers are going to be active, right? And that's kind of the area I'm looking for. I'm just looking for this 42 to act as a bit of resistance as we've seen the trend get a little bit tighter as, as we're going down. Um, if we were to draw another here, right? Wide, draw it in, I mean... You know, that's what we're looking for there. Hey, Tyler Simpson. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. What's the indicator for the profiles on TradingView? So go to the indicators and type in TPO. Um, type in TPO. And then uh, Druther, one of our community members, actually created this. So... Check it out. You might have to mess with the tick size and a, and a couple of things when you first uh, start to load it on. Um, uh, okay, there we go. Um, yeah, so my... Uh, just jump on there and, and check that out. It's actually it's really nice. You just have to mess with the tick size. So when you come down here, you click the settings. I have the auto tick off. I mainly am using it for like Bitcoin and Ethereum. Some of the bigger coins, it's a little bit easier. If you get onto some of the smaller coins, um, let's see what's uh, one of our smaller coins that's cracking today. Uh, 48, I think. Nothing really is doing this this right here is just uh, like a correlation chart between all the all the higher name cryptos i was trying to see if something was um moving down or if we had any big uh smaller coins moving down a lot um i use that what tick size i've set at 10. i have i think mine is on 48. Tick size bars back 48, average target session height for tick five, manual tick size 100. That's what I have mine on. Yeah, yeah. You could change like all the colors and stuff too if you want to, but I like I like it how it is. And then you can even put on um, individual sessions per for the hours, right? If you wanted to run the Asian session, London session, US session, um, you can put them all on there. Oh, thanks, Tyler. You're in PA. That's where I'm moving up uh, in the summertime this year. Yeah. The Northeast. Yeah.
Um, I do not use exo charts. I used to use exo charts, but uh, when Druther created this TPO, it just gives me everything that I need to get. So I don't want to pay for another thing. I I don't. I'm not a huge fan of. I haven't been on exo charts in a while, so I will say that. Um, probably about it's April. Probably about five months or so, maybe six months. I haven't been on exo charts. Um, and at the time when I was on exo charts, you know, you couldn't draw, couldn't draw a lot. You couldn't draw pretty much at all. It was kind of a pain in the ass to draw on the chart. And, you know, I, I'm a big fan of, of trends. Um, um, but, you know, and not, not being able to kind of, to, I like to see the, the trend line. I, I, I know, you know you could visualize it or just imagine but i like to see it because um, i like to look for the reaction at those spots But I have templates for exo charts too, still saved. I'm sure if you if you uh, if you use exo charts or or need um, templates. But this thing, I mean, this thing honestly gives you everything that you need for crypto. For futures, you want to get a little bit more close because with, with futures, each tick is a, a little bit more uh, expensive than it is with crypto. We'll see in pretty decent volume increase. Um, so we'll see in H we saw a pretty decent volume increase, less than yesterday, but a little bit more. Still not seeing the uh, still not seeing the unweighted sectors match the weighted sectors here. As far as the buying goes, but we'll have to just keep watching as the day continues on. You got to keep watching. Apple, right? Apple was up almost 2%. It's down about 1.5% up right now. Uh, Microsoft's still up almost 1.5%. Amazon's up 2.5%. Tesla, 2.5%. NVIDIA's up 2 and quarter percent. Walmart's up So watch if we break this 25 here watch the tempo on the way down towards that f low that that is a mechanical low yeah 2375 had some big uh big buyers on it if the d is at the bottom so, so with the, the TPO chart, what we're trying to track here is value, right? Because the TPO is a graphical representation of the auction process, which is what happens in every market, right? An auction process. It's just the difference is a two-way auction process. It auctions up and auction up ends, and then it auctions down. That auction ends, then it goes back to auctioning up, auctioning down, right? It, back and forth, it's just continuous two-way auction. Um, so the D session really is just representing, and if we pull up this chart here it's a 30 minute chart um the the difference is oh shit horns popping oh my god i'm rich i went up i've been waiting for this for like weeks oh hang on hang on one second guys yeah <laughs> Oh my fucking lord. Oh my god. Up to 783. If this thing gets up to 800. 
What's that? Oh. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so so we're not really looking for, you're not really looking at each letter individually. Each letter is just representing one 30-minute session. It's just, it takes away a lot of the noise, right? And so basically the, the market is measured um, based off of time, right? Time is the regulator of all opportunity. Volume is the measure of success or failure of all opportunity. Um, and... Um, we're, we're, that's what we're trying to pay attention to. Where are we spending the most time? Where are we getting the most volume? And we're starting to see some volume shift up here and we're starting to get five TPOs wide up here as well. So we're starting to see that shift from uh, below to above, right? And we have a double distribution profile, which is something that we you know, talked about in, in the trade view. We figured that today would be a trend day and cause some of this because we're tracking the emotion of yesterday's short traders, right? They got a little bit too short and then, and then bounced up. Yeah. It looks like a, a lot of the, the fangs coming down. Yeah. See if this drags it down. But yeah, that's, I mean, that's what we're looking for. You're not really paying attention to the letter. We just use the letter for references. And then you can see mechanical spots, um, which is a nuance. But when you think about big money in the market, big money is not caring if this was the CPI level or if this is the D half back. All right, big money is just buying whenever they feel like it. But mechanical traders are trading off exact levels because most of the time, these shorter term time frame traders are just in the market today, out of the market today. Right. Whereas a longer term trader, you know, wherever they decide to buy, they have a target in mind that they're going to sell. Or maybe they bought this as a hedge and they're not even caring about it. They're just making just doing it to protect losses. Right. Um, or to, to hedge against uh, possible losses. Oof, there goes a little bit of a little bit of a, a little flush right there. It looked like some sellers tried to come in but got caught. And then we also tend brave hard to try to stick away from terms like i mean bearish or bullish i do tend to use them just because i know everybody knows them but um when it comes to shorter term time frame traders like somebody's been buying the 25 pretty much all day but it's been a shorter time time frame trader this time because we've seen it on on this g low it's very mechanical right and that g low was right above the f halfback that was very mechanical f d halfback one tick on the e low very mechanical and so when when something's like this is happening, if there is some supply that comes in to break this level, these buyers right here easily flip to selling and then trade the market down. And what happens is you're like, oh, it's been holding support, holding support. I'm going to buy it as support. And then, you know, it flips and, and you, you're sitting there wondering, like, what the hell all these buyers and even especially if you're trading on a fucking um, order flow chart, like all these buyers are jumping in the market. How come I'm not how come the market's not going up? But, you know, in reality, you've got to think about who is trading this level, right? And that's shorter term time frame traders trading this level. And they're not really inclined to hold on to a position. They're kind of looking to capitalize on, you know, relatively small moves. Watch that 2375. Still had 262 lots trade on it last time and, and didn't trade this time when we broke that low. So there's still some, uh, still looks like some responsive buying. And this is right here inside yesterday's, uh, here in the low side of yesterday's value. 23.75 right here. We're about to get back to it.
Oh, damn. So pay attention right here as it comes back down to this 2375 and look for the tempo because it still hasn't taken these stops yet. There's stops still at the bottom of G. Once it once somebody uh, gets those stops in, um, we'll start to break it down. Uh, the TPO bootcamp is still like I'm, I'm making a new one. I ha um, there's a lot of interest in teaching a new one live. And so maybe once I get situated, once I move to the East Coast, I'll set that up and, and do it. It's just, it consumes a lot of my time and um, I got, I got a lot going on. So um, it's uh, you know, a little bit more difficult, but you know, it's something I do want to, uh, to make sure that I do. Close this corn trade, even though no, definitely not. I've been long in corn for like a couple of weeks. Yeah, corn, corn futures. Yeah, because I missed all the wheat plays. And I was trying to figure out what is in everything, and everything in America has corn oil in it. I played corn. From about 760 and today it's hitting 786. Yeah, soy soybeans are probably up as well. Let me check out soybeans. I didn't I didn't play any of that. Play corn. Yeah, so I mean soybeans are up but not not like corn. All right, we'll see you later.
Yeah, the market's getting pretty slow now, too. I think I'm going to call it. All right, see you later, Kevin. Yeah, we'll wrap it up here. Um, I think the market hours are a little bit different. Uh, I'm going to have to try to figure it out exactly what the what the hours are tomorrow. Um, if they are open, we'll definitely be up trading them. If they're not open, you know, probably won't be trading them. Um, but I appreciate everyone coming to hang out. Um, Braveheart, if if, uh, if you want to find out, it's a um, it's a Easter holiday. Um, yeah, but for some reason it says that futures are closed tomorrow, so I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, so there, there's the Discord link right there. Join that Discord and, um, you know, check it out. But make sure that you are managing risk and sticking to your trade plan, and you guys have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will talk to you guys later.